The value of gold is dictated by the market. And in the college football market, values change every week. The Golden Bears of Cal found their net worth dropped from 12 to 23 after a tough road loss to Tennessee. Add now a commodity exchange as Cal looks to utilize its assets with Nate Longshore and Joseph Ayub sharing time at quarterback. The value of the Golden Gophers is on the rise after a crushing week one shutout. Minnesota is investing in offense and soaring into the black. Tonight, Cal and Minnesota look to define the new gold standard as the Golden Bears take on the Golden Gophers. Next. Memorial Stadium in Strawberry Canyon is where the Cal faithful have come. The Golden Bears open up their home season for 2006. Tonight from Berkeley, California, TBS Saturday Night College Football presented by Orbitz kicks off now. And it's the fifth meeting between Cal and Minnesota. Minnesota looking to go 2-0 on the year. Cal looking for their first win of 2006. Hello again, everybody. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Ron Thulin. Three straight years, Minnesota's had not one, but two 1,000-yard rushers. But this time, for the first time since 2002, none of them returned. Doesn't mean they're not going to run the football, Charles, but the question is, who's going to be running the football? You're right, Ron. They are committed to running the football, and their head coach, Glenn Mason, says they may do it by committee, but the chairman for the present time is a sophomore, Alex Daniels, who ran real big in the first game against Kent State. A surprise moved him from linebacker to tailback in preseason. 155 yards, three touchdowns, the Big Ten Player of the Week on offense, and at 260 pounds, he's the type of back the defenses do not like to hit for four quarters. Now let's go to the other side of the football. Cal came in with high expectations this year, but last week lost by 17 to Tennessee, and I've got this feeling, Charles, that it's harder for the coaches to get over that loss than it is the players. Jeff Tedford confirmed that for us when he said he still has a knot in his stomach but his team is awfully resilient and they bounce back with a big week of practice and the guy who's leading them is their All-American candidate at tailback Marshawn Lynch. 12 carries in Knoxville against the University of Tennessee. That's not nearly enough. He will touch the ball early and often in this ball game. He's going to carry it all night long, and he's going to be the guy to try and get the Cal Bears back on track. Now we're going to see some smash mouth football tonight, but that doesn't mean the quarterbacks aren't important. No, not at all. Brian Cupido from Minnesota, Nate Longshore from Cal. Whichever quarterback can throw the ball more effectively tonight gives their team a real advantage. Now there's going to be a streak end tonight because Minnesota's won 17 consecutive non-conference games, and on the other side of the football, Cal hasn't lost here at home since October of 2003. It's going to be Smash Mouth Football with Minnesota and Cal coming up next on TBS. Tomorrow on TBS. Football on TBS brought to you by the all-new Hyundai Santa Fe with electronic stability control and six airbags standard. Rethink everything. Buy Papa John's. Order pizza online 24 hours a day at PapaJohns.com. Buy New York Life, the company you keep. And buy Orbits. Just Orbits and go. Welcome back to Strawberry Canyon. Temperatures in the 60s, overcast skies. Should be a perfect night for football. The third member of our broadcast team, Craig Sager, with more on whether or not this Cal team has forgotten about Rocky Top. Well, I'll tell you what, Cal's embarrassing loss to Tennessee has spurred debate. Are the expectations of a top 10 program and a Heisman Trophy candidate overrated? Or has Cal become a consistent program that will grow into an even greater national presence? Jeff Tedford and his coaches addressed the challenges this week. On the practice field, it was back to the basics blocking, tackling, and catching the football. In the locker room, noted psychologist Dr. Harry Edwards assisted with confidence, leadership, and proving your worth. After a week of doubt and resolve, it's time for a game that in all likelihood will be a defining moment one way or the other in Cal season. Run. All right, thanks, Sags. We'll be checking back with you throughout the game. That's Jeff Tedford. That's Glenn Mason in his 10th year. 
has led the Gophers to six bowls in the last seven years. Only the fourth coach in Minnesota history to get 50 wins. Cal won the toss and will be receiving. Marshawn Lynch up over the 20 to the 24 yard line. That's where Cal will get started. Their offense four straight seasons have averaged plus 400 yards a game. Their quarterback is Nate Longshore, the sophomore, threw only 11 passes last year. But all he has to do, Charles, is manage the game and do what he does best. And for him, that means Mike Dunbar, the offensive coordinator, and Jeff Tedford, the head coach, calling plays that play to his strengths. He's an excellent thrower of the football, but his best strength is number 10 in the backfield, Marshawn Lynch. New wrinkle in this Cal offense. You'll see him go from the shotgun part of the time, you know. Longshore will put it up. First pass right in and out of the hands of Eric Began, the tight end. Let's take a look at our Red Lobster starting lineups. The Cal offensive line, Eric Robertson will be a guard. He leads the offensive line not only in starts, but also in tattoos. And at the wide receiver spot, this young man is outstanding. Deshaun Jackson had a great freshman year. He is one of the many speedsters that will be catching the ball tonight for this Cal team. Nice call on first down. Eric Began just didn't catch the football. But I would not be surprised if Cal doesn't come right back and give it to Lynch here. Jackson in motion. He's got it. Tries to get to the 25. Steps out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Minnesota defense, they're young, but they finished 90th last year in defense. On the line, Steve Davis at defensive end. He's part of a line that's made up by two sophomores and a couple of juniors. Linebacking, keep an eye on Mario Reese. He's a strong safety linebacker mix, but he can disrupt. And in the secondary, Tremaine Banks, their best cover guy, 35 starts at cornerback for the Gophers. Nickel package in the game for Minnesota on defense. First third and long of the evening. They're down at eight. Exactly what Cal didn't want tonight happened at Tennessee. Longshore's got time. Pass complete, short of the first down, up to the 34-yard line. Robert Jordan with his third catch of the year, the junior out of Hayward, California. Everything's nice here for Cal, except the end result. Good protection, nice throw, nice catch, but about a yard and a half short. Is that Jordan's fault? About half a yard on, on getting, the, getting the first down. Is that Jordan's fault? You know, we, we sometimes I think we overemphasize finding the chains and finding where you are. Mm -hmm. I think that he's got to find that spot, but at the same time, let's give a little credit to the coverage. They closed on him quickly. Andrew Larson, the new punter for Cal this year, junior college transfer, was an All-American, had a good game against Tennessee. In fact, Jeff Tedford said that was one of the highlights of that ball game. And that's where Minnesota is going to take over. Let's take a look at some more Red Lobster starting lineups for Minnesota offense. Seven straight years, 2,000 yards pass and run. Brian Cupido, their quarterback, he is playing better than ever. He's a three-year starter. He also leads the run game. Yeah, he's the guy who gets them in and out of good plays running the ball. And as a three-year starter and a guy that they can trust, don't be surprised if Minnesota opens with a pass play here, figuring Cal will load up on the run. Yeah, they'll go from the eye. This is what they do at best. They set up the run. They throw the football complete to Matt Spate, the tight end. Inside the 30, down to the 25-yard line. They'll mark it at the 23. Good call, partner. 48 yards on the reception for Matt Spate, an outstanding wide receiver. Watch all the flow to the right of your screen. Everyone moves that way, including the offensive line. Matt Spaeth pretended to block and then slipped out into the flat, totally uncovered. Excellent first play for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Ah, they sell the run so well, the Gophers. First and 10, ball's on the 23. Daniels will get his first carry of the ball game. Has a blocker in front, just lowers his head. Gets down to the 19. Let's see Minnesota's offensive line. Pretty solid blockers. Now they frustrate opponents with this zone blocking package, and Tony Brinkhouse is the anchor there. And the wide receiver spot, Logan Payne, been a pleasant surprise last year. He has turned into Cupido's favorite receiver. And the offensive coordinator for Minnesota, Mitch Browning. He's been with Glenn Mason 21 years in a variety of roles, and they really mesh well together. Logan Payne wide to the left. Daniels will try it again. This time the Cal defense stacks him up. Right at about the 13-yard line, Warrell Williams with his first tackle. Cal defense, they led the Pac-10 in scoring defense last year. Three starters on the defensive line 
Our three senior starters, Brandon Meebane, the most disruptive defensive lineman in the Pac-10. Linebacker, keep an eye on Desmond Bishop. He was second team Pac-10 last year. Got a real nose for the football. And then a secondary, Damian Hughes, a preseason All-American. First team all Pac-10 last year. First and 10 from the 12 for the Gophers. Opening drive for them. Thomas in motion. They go straight ahead running inside the five down to the two yard line. This is exactly what Minnesota does so well, Charles. They just drive off the football and just come right straight at you. Watch the gaps coming at you that are created by the offensive line. Tony Brinkhouse, number 77. Tyson Swagger, number 56, creating a hole for the big fella, number six, Alex Daniels. Second down and one balls on the three yard line. They'll go from the eye. Daniels straight ahead running. Touchdown, Minnesota. Already his fourth touchdown of the year. He had his first multi touchdown game of his career last week. Watch the guys up front. See the push that they get. The push was so good by number 78, Joe Ainsley that he ended up in the end zone before Alex Daniels. Tyson Swaggart, number 56, followed behind him. There was no one for him to hit because Ainsley had already caved in that side of the line. Now we have a whistle. 11:37. haven't even played four minutes, and Minnesota gets on the board quickly. Now they're, they're going to review the play. And our review officials tonight are Ben Pope and Jim Coyne. They're upstairs in the booth. There's a good look at Alex Daniels, a sophomore out of Columbus, Ohio. Looking for the knee, Charles, I think. Right. Still up, still, still up, up, still up, down before yeah. he gets in. Ball should be placed right about there. Well, the officials, I tell you, Ben and Jim upstairs. That's Ben on the right, Jim Coyne on the left. They are outstanding in what they do. They're doing a good job taking a couple of different looks at this. Now, if you're Cal, you have Minnesota come up with a big play, the pass to Matt Spade. First uh, possession of Minnesota, they gouge you. Are you saying to yourself, oh my goodness, it's Tennessee again? They shouldn't be, but that's what you're guarding against if your coach is on the sideline, trying to coach them up and say, okay, first drive of the game. They got us with a big one. Let's not let that linger. You know the difference is, Ron, here in, in the opening drive? Is that Cal on first down? Review. There's conclusive video evidence that the runner's knee was down with the ball at the one foot line. Great Therefore, call. the ruling on the field is reversed. Minnesota ball, first and goal from the one foot line. It's a great call because look, yeah. knees down, ball is right there before the goal line. Excellent job by the replay officials. But all I was saying, Ron, Cal's first play of the game, they threw the ball. Wide open guy mm -hmm. didn't connect. Put him behind the chains on first down. As so we look at the red zone offense here for Minnesota, Minnesota capitalized on their first down. And here, and Ron, here's my early prediction: number six, Daniels, coming right at you. Ryan <laughs> Valentine, number 18. Uh, 255 pounds coming straight ahead. First and goal from about the foot yard. Daniels straight ahead. Touchdown, Minnesota again. This time it's going to count. Not bad for a guy that started as an experiment as a running back. <laughs> I can safely assure you, Ron, there was not a science experiment I did in my collegiate or high school career that worked as well as this experiment that Glenn Mason has with Alex Daniels going to tailback. Well, they averaged almost five yards a carry on five rushes, 23 yards on that opening drive. The extra point, which was an exciting play for Minnesota last year. This time, Janini splits the uprights. But it is Minnesota taking the early lead, 7-0 over Cal. Seven nothing to Minnesota. Very impressive drive. Of course, the key play, Brian Cupido hitting his big tight end, Matt Spaeth. That was the play that loosened up Cal, and then Daniels took over. And that's why we are at seven nothing right now. Minnesota on top 11 21 in the first. Already seeing a very impressive offensive line. From Minnesota. Terrific job on the opening drive. Damian Hughes Marshawn Lynch set to receive Monroe's kick. High end over end. Lynch from the six. 
Turns on the Jets' look out. Up over the 30 to the 33-yard line, and Joel Monroe, the kicker, makes the tackle. Here we go, here we go. Go Bears on three. Let's go take a look at tonight's orbits. Fast and easy keys Two, to the game. Three. Let's take a look at Cal first up, Charles. Two, We've got rhythm three. in Tennessee. Never established Five, a rhythm two, on three. offense. Already out of sync to start this ball game. It's not that heavy. John McCase to say that about the football. <laughs> that means Marshawn Lynch should tote it a lot tonight. Takes one to no one. Cal's defense should know a defender who's now become a tailback. That's Alex Daniels. They've met him already plenty this evening. Well, last week we were wondering if OU was going to give the ball to Adrian Peterson. Let's see if they probably give it to Lynch, and they do. Marshawn Lynch bangs his way up over the 35-yard line, pushed back. Neil Allen on the stop. Let's take a look at the Orbit's keys for the Gophers of Minnesota. Well, Glenn Mason's group run for health. The health of their offense predicated on the run game. That's working well so far. Create Spate. Matt Spate, the tight end. They want him more involved. Already he is receiving a huge catch. Winning numbers, 11. 11 guys on defense getting to number 10. Marshawn Lynch and three. Third down. Get off the field on third down for the Minnesota defense. Second down and seven from the shotgun. Lynch again, this time up over the 40-yard line. He's stacked up by that Minnesota defense. A bunch of white jerseys on top of him. You know, you look at Marshawn Lynch, you have to add in Justin Forsett, the junior out of Arlington, Texas. And there's a lot of talk that because they've kind of gone to a little bit of spread offense along with Jeff Tedford's offense, we would see both. But that's not necessarily the case. No, when we talked with Jeff Tedford and Mike Dunbar, one point that they made was, well, if we have them both in the game and we're trying to run the football, one of them has to be the lead blocker. That's not their forte. So you'll probably see them both on the, both on the field, but only in pass That's situations. Right. Three wide receivers to the left, and Long Show will keep it on the ground. And Justin Forsett got the first down and about a foot yet half to spare. Gets up over the 45 to the 46-yard line. Forsett rushed for 999 yards last year. We look at Jeff Tedford checking the wrist, but really the offensive coordinator, Mike Dunbar, calls about 85% of the plays. Remember how impressive the offensive line for Minnesota was on their first drive? Cal equally impressive on these three plays. Got some push against the defensive front of Minnesota. Forsett found a crack for a first down. Well, there is a question mark on this Minnesota team. It is their defense, as it has been the last couple of years. Long short. Plenty of time, scrambling out. Now he throws this one away. We have a bunch of penalty flags down, and where they're thrown, you would think it's going to be holding. Pressure was put on by Steve Davis, we talked about in the open, the sophomore out of St. Louis, Missouri. Jay Stricker is our official referee tonight. Pac-10 officiating crew. Holy. On the offense, number 71. 10-yard penalty, previous spot, still first down. Andrew Cameron's the culprit. Take a look, left side of your screen. Cameron right there. He's locked up with Willie Van de Steeg, number 91. See where he's got it grabbed? That's the spot. Now four set, still in the backfield. Robert Jordan to the near side. They go with three wide receivers set again and the eye. Ryan Storrs, the fullback, takes a step over to the left. Long short. Deep out. Jordan caught it, dropped it. Incomplete. You look back at Tennessee. We hate to keep bringing it up, Charles, but their first five offensive series for Cal, they had five second and longs, minus 26 total yards, penalties, long, bad first downs, the whole nine yards. Yeah, not good rhythm as we talked about. And this is a long throw for Nate Longshore. And what he did wrong there was he threw it inside to Robert Jordan. That ball needed to be outside, so he had a chance. That's Mike Dunbar, the new offensive coordinator, came from Northwestern, where his offense last year averaged over 500 yards per game. Second down and 20. Looked like movement on the right side, but they're going to keep it. Jordan. Tries to get away, piled on at the 44-yard line up to the 45-yard line. That'll bring up a third down and about 11. Looked like there were people jumping all over the place on the line. Nice little inside, inside screen to number 11, Robert Jordan, using Justin Forsett almost as a decoy, getting him down into the secondary and bringing Jordan back inside. Lynch had been out a few plays, Marshawn. But he's back in the game now. 
Sam DeSaw goes wide to the right. Third down and 11. Again from the shotgun. Minnesota only brings four. Longshore steps up, looks, has a man open in the middle. Deshaun Jackson caught. First down, Cal. Dominique Barber on the coverage. The junior out of Plymouth, Minnesota, whose father and brother both played for the Gophers. I think that was a real good job in the pocket by the quarterback, Nate Longshore. Running the ball is not his forte, but sometimes you can create extra time and space just by your movements in the pocket. Notice how he just stepped forward, found an angle, and, an, and a lane to throw the football, and connected downfield with Deshaun Jackson. Well, that's a pickup of 17, first and 10 now for the Golden Bears. A little play action. Longshore throws it out of the flat, passes caught by Lavelle Hawkins. Another first down for the Bears for the junior out of Stockton, California, his fourth catch first of the year. What I like about this play, the fake inside. See number 75, Eric Robertson. It's called a waggle play. Pull the guard up out in front of the quarterback to protect him on the front side, giving him an extra, a little bit extra time to throw the ball. Easy throw to Lavelle Hawkins for another first down. Five men on the line for Minnesota. They'll keep it on the ground. Lynch tries to spin away from the first hit. Maybe picks up a yard and a half, maybe two. Mike Sher Sherrills is on the stop. And our first and ten line tonight is being brought to you by Napa. Sherrills, one of the many walk-ons on this defense for Minnesota. And you and I were talking yesterday, Charles. There's a lot of walk-ons on this team, more than we have seen in many other teams the last five years. Yeah, Glenn Mason likes to say that he want, you know, we'll go out and get some guys maybe other guys weren't quite sure about. And he holds like five or six scholarships a year to reward guys. But I think they still like to up their recruiting a little bit. On second and eight, fake to Lynch. Longshore going down the middle, wide open. Touchdown, Cal! Robert Jordan! Sam Desai will break to the corner, and right across the middle in the seam is number 11, Robert Jordan. Terrific throw by Nate Longshore. And yes, he's happy. But I think there's a little bit of relief there also. Oh. Cal on the board, evening things up at, uh, with a chance to even things up at seven. That's a tough cover for John Shevlin, the linebacker, to try to pick up somebody like Jordan who's got outstanding speed. Extra point is good, but we have a penalty flag. Have a penalty flag on the extra point. Personal foul roughing the kicker. It goes against Minnesota. And I guess but, they'll assess that on the kickoff, correct? That's exactly right. But Robert Jordan, his first touchdown of the year for the junior from Hayward, California. And we'll just double check, wait for the call, make sure what we're going to do here. You know, when you're playing on the road, too, Glenn Mason has a small margin first of error. Foul, roughing the kicker on the defense. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Yeah, that's what we found out. So Glenn Mason's troops takes a 7-0 lead. Now they're tied up at 7 with 7-11 to play in the first. You've waited. You Answered Minnesota scoring first to tie the game up at 7. Impressive drive, and we'll talk more about that uh, hybrid offense they have now. Jeff Tedford had a very complicated offense, probably the biggest playbook in the Pac-10 last year. <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably, I'd say so. Mike Dunbar comes in. He's got a lot of plays. But the offense seems to be meshing right now. Of course, they're going to assess the roughing the kicker penalty, so uh, they're going to kick off from about the 50. I think it's a pretty good head start. There's Mike Dunbar. Great story, too, because... It, Jeff Tedford had never heard of uh, Mike Dunbar. Somebody was thinking about going to the spread, but he said, I wasn't going to do it unless I got an expert. And then he ends up calling Mike Dunbar. So what he did was he saw the numbers Northwestern has put up, and he said, who is the guy calling the plays? I need to meet him. And they were introduced at last year's coaching convention. And a few weeks later, Mike Dunbar was making the trek west. Watch for them to pop this ball up in the air, Ron. You don't want to just kick it out of the end zone. Pop it in the air and try and pin them and make a big play here. Yeah, they're going to go for it. Or Goodbye. The end zone. <laughs> 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 that 
Hey, you called the you called the pass right, okay? <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, let's get this done the right way. Let's take a look at that right touchdown way. route. Uh, pretty good route run by Jordan. Excellent route. The problem for John Shevlin, the linebacker, is that he's going to need to retreat this far, but he only retreated this far. He had a route here, and then right up the seam is Robert Jordan. Very tough for the linebacker. The safety's taken out by the route to the corner, and then Shevlin can't retreat deep enough. Jordan wide open. First and 10 from the 20 yard line for Minnesota. Daniels will get it again. This time he is going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brandon Hampton coming up from that rover spot. Let's check in with Mark Fine. Mark, how did the Sooners do today? Oh, I got the answer for you right here, Ron. Oklahoma, 10 in the country, taking on Washington and Adrian Peterson having himself a day. 175 yards rushing. Two touchdowns. Oklahoma wins it 37 to 20. Virginia Tech, 14 in the country, taking on North Carolina. Brandon Orr, three touchdowns for him. They win it 35 to 10, guys. All right, Mark. Mark's going to be with us throughout the uh, evening, and at halftime, we'll have all the scores and highlights from around the country. Second down and nine. Cupido will put it up. Pass is complete again to Logan Payne. Got some running room. Tripped up over the 35-yard line. They'll mark him out right at about the 36. Damian Hughes on the coverage. Talked about him being the favorite receiver, the senior out of Lutz, Florida. Had a good game against Iowa last year. 11 receptions. Kind of was a highlight of what's to come. Nice little shallow cross. A couple receivers deep. And he comes underneath the coverage. Nice throw by Brian Cupido. Nice and easy. Logan Payne runs for a first down after the, after the catch. Matt Spath, an outstanding tight end on the near side, on the sideline now, limping around from Minnesota. We hope to get an update. Cupido going deep, has a man incomplete. Outstretched hands of Eric Decker, the redshirt freshman from Cold Spring, Minnesota. Sid Quan Thompson on the coverage. Now that is something that is important for Cal, I think. Sid Quan Thompson beaten last week by Tennessee. They picked on him as a former cornerback. He needs a short-term memory for last week. Short-term memory and early success in this game. Out and up, nice job by Sid Quan Thompson because what he did was get a hand on, on Eric Decker. Low pressure there from Brandon Meebane. That helps him. At the same time, he was able to stay almost step for step and was not beaten on his initial attempt of the evening. Now moving around on defense. Desmond Bishop calling the signals. Daniels straight ahead. Tries to get up to the 40-yard line. Stacked up. Williams, first one to make contact. The sophomore out of Sacramento, California. Sid Quan Thompson was trying to rip the ball away from him. That's a good look at Williams. That's a good observation there, Ron, because what they did was Warrell Williams, number one, was the initial hit. He stood up the runner, Daniels. That allowed Sid Thompson to come from the corner position and try and rake the ball out. Once you secure the tackle, then you try and get the ball out also. Third down and six. Bishop in inches up to the line, then he drops back. Cupido out into the flat. Short of the first down. Great job tackling by Cal. Sid Quan Thompson is the man who made the hit, and Williams helped him out. One thing they had a problem with last week was tackling. No problem on that play. Not bad, not bad at all. We talked about Sid Quan Thompson, right? Needed some success early. Covered the pass route against Eric Decker, then comes up and puts a hit on the big fella. Alex Daniels puts Minnesota in a punting position. Nice early success for the freshman corner who had a tough day in Knoxville last week. Yeah, Minnesota punted a league low 38 times last year. He said, except to kick it away. Good snap, here comes Cal. Line drive kick. Jackson will have some running room. Good field position for Cal. We do have a penalty flag at the 48-yard line. 34 yards on the kick, we'll call it about 10. Uh, the return and that will go against Cal. That'll be a personal foul call. And they'll talk about it. that's too bad because Jeff Tedford's squad would have had pretty good field position. Now he wants to make sure the South judge personal knows. Personal foul on the receiving team, number seven. We're hitting the kicker when he's out of the play. 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, that is a no-no. Minnesota scored first here in the opening quarter. Cal came right back to tie things up. A little smash mouth football going on at Cal. We're tied at seven.
leading Minnesota 7-7. This is why Jeff Tedford's so upset. Watch number seven in blue, right side of your screen. He delivers the block on the punter. And they say that that was an illegal block because the punter was clearly out of the play. This is where I disagree. Punters make more tackles on long plays, kicks, right, on a punt mm -hmm. play than anyone else. The only thing you could say here is possibly clip. Uh, that's what but I if you're not calling clip, oh. I don't think that that's a call that should be made. It wasn't like he was defenseless. He was trailing the play in case he had to make a tackle. Well, Jeff Tedford wasn't pleased with it, but he's got the football nonetheless. Last week, no flow in their offense. They beat themselves a little bit better tonight. Minnesota shows six on the line. Lynch tries to find a little running room to the outside. Nothing doing. He had 12 rushes for 74 yards last week. Five receptions. They want him 20 to 25 touches a ball game. Yeah, and that's not just running the ball it's in the past game. And also, we've seen him return two kickoffs so far. And that's interesting in itself. Much. Yes, I mean, many people say, why would you use your big horse that way? It increases the chances of injury. Jeff Tedford tried last year to reduce that with him, and now he says, hold it a minute. I got my best players on the field handling the ball. David Gray in motion. Lynch. What a cut. Got the first down as he crosses the 35 up to the 38-yard line. John Shevlin on the stop, but what a move by Marshawn Lynch. And once he got to the corner, watch the move he puts on the corner, number 11, Desi Stive. Excellent move, nice cuts. He stived number 11, misses. Then he's strong enough to nearly run out of the tackle of number 46, John Shevlin, their linebacker. Ron, in my opinion, he's one of the top two backs in America, the NCAA. Adrian Peterson, Agreed. Oklahoma, Marshawn Lynch here at Cal. Back-to-back -back weeks, we're seeing the two top ones in my humble opinion. And two different kind of running backs, too. Now Lynch goes over in the slot. They throw him out a little swing pass. Again, he splits the defense. Gets up to the 45-yard line. High Tower and Tremaine Banks on the stop. He is being touted as a Heisman Trophy candidate. And one of the things that Jeff Tedford told him, you're going to be getting a lot of publicity. Be yourself. But Coach Tedford also talked to him about the responsibility that goes along with this publicity. Because if it were left up strictly to Marshawn Lynch, he would never do the photo spreads. He would never do the interviews. He's a shy, unassuming type, wants credit to go to his teammates. But Cal needs the publicity. So they've asked him to step up and assume that role. And he's doing quite nicely with it. Justin Forsett, he shows a little bit of speed, getting to the outside, down to the 45, to the 42-yard line. Jamal Harris on the tackle, coming up from that cornerback spot. Nice back-to-back -back runs for Cal. That last pass that they threw to Marshawn Lynch, they put it down as a lateral, so it became a running play. Look at that up front. That's Alex Mack, number 51, locked up. Then he gets to the corner and really makes it happen before Jamal Harris is able to bring him down. You throw Lynch and Forsett, that's the top rushing tandem in college football today, returning. First and 10 from the 41, long short play action, lugging deep. Nobody there, a little miscommunication with Nate Longshore and Robert Jordan. Jermaine Banks was right with him, and we have another penalty flag sitting down at the 35-yard line. And the receiver actually broke his route off on Nate Longshore. Our second personal foul call against the Bears of Cal. Now what? After the play, personal foul on the offense, number 10. It's a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. The down counts. Down will be two. Marshawn Lynch faking. Now he goes through. Pops John Shevlin. They're locked up. Shevlin gets a shot in. And then, oh, that's oh, it. Second guy gets caught. You always get caught. And yeah. right in front of an official. Now that's a play that he does not need to make. That just hurts his ball club. Got to hold your poise even when things go against you the way that they just did. Minnesota getting chippy, but this is a team that has to play with a chip on their shoulder. And I'll talk more after this play, but I'm not surprised that Cal's a little chippy today, too. Mm -hmm. Second down and 25. Long short dumps it out into the flat to Began, the tight end. He's upended. Good tackle at the 47-yard line. Long short to 
the reason I Dominic say Jones I mean, on the stop start, Charles. Sorry, Ron. The reason I say that I'm not surprised that they're chippy is that was a tough day in Knoxville last week. They've spent all week hearing about how bad they were and how how embarrassing a loss it was on the national scene. You know what kind of practices they had this week to try and get it out of their system? Yeah. You know darn well the coaches were talking about being aggressive, and that's what they've been doing here in this ball game. I'm really not surprised early on. It's a little over aggressive. On third and 16, long short pumps left, goes down the middle, had a man wide open, couldn't find Robert Jordan, just overthrew him. Duran Cooley was on the coverage. Well, Jeff Tedford said the only thing that can get him out of the funk were the players, but it was a very difficult afternoon in Rocky Top, which you know a lot about, Charles. He said, see the quote there, we just weren't very sharp, but he also talked a lot about the atmosphere. Yeah, and in the Pac-10, Right now, the way things stand at USC, 92,000 is the biggest place you're going to play with that type of atmosphere, unless it's UCLA, USC, and the Rose Bowl. The rest of the time, there in Oregon, your top atmospheres. Larson, good hang time, stops at the 20 yard line, only a 27 yard kick. He had two punts last week for only 17 yards on return, hung that one up well. Now log on to SA.com now for the latest news, scores, stats, analysis, and more. For more on college football or Stuart Mandel's power rankings, all you have to do, get on the computer and go to SI.com today. Ball sits squarely on the 20. Minnesota scoring on their first possession of the ball game. Haven't been able to capitalize since. Decker in motion. Daniels. Hops over one. Look out. Turns out some speed. Gets up to the 40-yard line. Penalty flag is thrown. Right at the 28-yard line. Pickup of 21 on the play for Alex Daniels. That would be his longest run of his career for Minnesota if it stands. And it's going to go against Minnesota, so it's coming back. Second penalty against the Gophers. Holding on the offense, number 27. Ten yard penalty, spot of the foul, still first down. Let's check in with Craig Sager on the sideline. Sags. Well, you're talking about playing with a chip on your shoulder. It's the defense of Cal that usually shows the most emotion after they finally stop Minnesota in their last series of the sidelines. They're over here jumping around. Desmond Bishop grabbing them all, saying, we've got to get our swagger back. We have to get our swagger back. Very important for them to stop Minnesota in this series, not let them march downfield. So, yes, they can indeed get that swagger. That's right. a great point, Craig. Because with they, you know, they had a little confidence ding coming out of Knoxville. Didn't stop them on the first drive. They did it on the second. Now they've got long yardage here, so they have the advantage in this series. Ball's on to 17, first and 13. Cupido throws the long out. Pot up to the 22-yard line. Eric Decker, the redshirt freshman, had one catch last week's game. That's one of the players that you talk to Glenn Mason. He says, gee, I wish I wouldn't have redshirted Decker last year along with Mike Chambers. Said, those guys are talented and they needed some playing time. Yeah, that reception against Kent State for a touchdown, his first career reception. Similar to a guy going to the major leagues, right, hitting a home run, his first at-bat. Not a bad way to break in. Second down and eight. Daniels showing some good footwork, tries to get to the outside, but... Desmond Bishop, the senior out of Fairfield, California, his second year out of City College of San Francisco on the stop. He is the ringleader of this defense, and Damian Hughes knows that when Desmond Bishop talks, everybody listens. And he should as far thank as motivation. Uh, probably Desmond Bishop. Um, I mean, he's a leader on defense, and, and he's our our emotional leader. So um, we look we look to him for that. Um, he, he keeps us pumped on game days and all of that. Yep. Third down and nine. Here comes five. Cupido scrambling has to throw it up in the cheap seats into the Minnesota bench. That time Cal brought the pressure. Brandon Meebane. We talked about him being disruptive. That's why he's first team all Pac-10. And it was back-to-back -back plays by Brandon Meebane because Desmond Bishop may be the ringleader, but he needs the up front guys to get the push 
to allow him to flow to the football and make tackles. The previous running play, Meebain disrupted it, pushed the offensive line back into the backfield, made Daniels bow it out. And that's where, that's where Desmond Bishop and a host of Golden Bears met it. Then on the last play, he, got dis he was disruptive in the pocket. Cupido had to throw it away. Usyk's first punt was 35 yards. Cal putting seven on the line of scrimmage, and here they come right up the middle again. Another one should be returned. Nope. Well, Deshaun Jackson's going to pick it up. Then he just steps out of bounds. 41 yards on the kick, four on the return. Let's check in with Mark Fine, a little Iowa Syracuse. Mark. Yeah, no, a lot of Iowa Syracuse actually. Second overtime, Iowa first on third down. They're going to stop Perry Patterson, the quarterback. Then fourth down for the game. They need to stop running back Tony Fiametta, and they do. Kirk Ferenz's crew without quarterback Drew Tate, injured abdominal muscle. They win it 2013. I tell you, Kirk Ferentz is a great football coach, the pride of Upper St. Clair, Pennsylvania. Long short, not afraid to put it up, getting a lot of opportunities to throw. Throws the long out. That's a tough pass. Great catch by Hawkins. He shows an awful lot of confidence. Long short, not afraid to throw that deep out. Not at all. And as he threw the ball, Ron, I was shaking my head. No, 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 because. I thought that number two, Dominic Jones, the guy they call Mighty Mouse, was going to come out underneath the route. But he set up and never kept, he didn't keep driving. So when he stopped, that left the room for Hawkins to make the catch. Nate Longshore showing plenty of arm. Seven first downs already here in the opening quarter for Cal. Longshore going deep down the middle. Tip caught inside the 10 down of the seven yard line. Barber tipped it. And Bell Hawkins came up with it. Forty two yards. The ball thrown by Longshore tipped up in the air and nice concentration by Lavelle Hawkins. Garrett Brown number ninety nine flushed him and then he absorbs a hit from number ninety two Steve Davis kept his focus downfield. That was the beneficiary of some good fortune on that tip pass. First down and goal from the six. Lynch puts the head down, gets down to the two, still driving the feet, stacked up at about the three. And that's the way the first quarter will end. We'll change sides. Minnesota scored first. Cal tied it up, and now they're knocking on the door again. Tied at seven for Berkeley. Set to start the second quarter, tied at seven. Cal knocking on the door again. Longshore fakes the run, touchdown pass caught. Deshaun Jackson. Cal had 189 yards in that opening quarter. Now they've got something to show for it. And this play is set up because of Cal's ability to run the football. Your play action becomes that much better when you have an All-American candidate in the backfield. If you fake to him, naturally, where's the defense going to go? Take your attention to the better player. Leaves it wide open for Deshaun Jackson. John Schneider set to kick the extra points. Only missed three out of 110 in his career. Remains perfect on the year. Now looking impressive offensively. Long short with the touchdown pass. They lead it by seven. KFC's Build Your Own Variety Bucket. Choose over Minnesota, 14 to 7, along with Charles Davis and Craig Sager. I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you to a cool overcast night in Berkeley, California, just across the bay from San Francisco. Now the onus falls on this Minnesota offense, but one of the things people don't think about when you think Minnesota, Brian Cupido is an underrated quarterback. Underrated maybe not in the Big Ten, but the rest of the country, but this is a young man that will hold just about all the passing records when it's all said and done for the Gophers. Yeah, when they talk about how well Minnesota runs it, people forget that for the last seven seasons, while they've run for over 2,000 yards in a the season, they've also thrown for over 2,000 yards. And for the stout running game, really aids a good passer. And Brian Cupido takes full advantage. Well, he's already moved into the number five spot all-time passing yardage in Gopher history. Dominic Jones up over the 20. One man to beat the kicker. He's got to beat Schneider. Gets the block. 
kiss him goodbye. Ninety-nine yards on the touchdown return. Number two, number two. Chris Williams from New Mexico State did it a year ago on a kick return against Cal, and now Minnesota does it again. And it's a terrific job because Dominic Jones read the blocking and just hit the gap immediately. Not a lot of dancing and twisting. As soon as he saw a hole, he went to it, and a nice block downfield on the kicker allowed him to waltz into the end zone with a huge kickoff return for a touchdown. Morris Baroni was the last gopher to do it. He did it against Troy State in 2003. But this time, it's Dominic Jones out of Columbus, Ohio, Brookhaven High School. Nice job cleaning up inside by Minnesota and then downfield. There's the key block on the kicker, Schneider. Staying with the play all the way. And that opens things up for him. All 5'8", 190 pounds of them. What's up, Ma? What's up, Tommy? Oh, Ma, where are you, everybody? What's up, y'all? Now, there's a pretty good Minnesota contingent here. Had a lot of them in our hotel. They were up early this morning. They were ready to go, and now they got something to cheer about, tying the number 23 team in the country at 14 apiece. You know, it's funny, the, the guy who cleaned out the kicker was Eric Decker, their start, a, a, a backup wide receiver. Mm -hmm. And one of the notes I have on my board about Eric Decker, likes to block, does not mind sticking his nose in yeah. to help things out. And he did that very well on that kickoff return. Yeah, you think about that, the, some of the teams that have great wide receivers as blockers, the old Tom Osborne days and Frank Solich at Nebraska. <laughs> Ron Brown did a great job of coaching up his wide receivers to be great blockers. I used to hate playing teams with good blocking wide receivers. If they had a full cage and a neck roll, you knew you were in for a long afternoon. Now Marshawn Lynch stops, goes the other way. Now he's going to lose some yardage. Now he's on his feet still. But he is going to lose a bundle as they stack him up back at the eight-yard line. Desi Stieb on the stop. He went nowhere quickly on that play. Where's Kenny Rogers when you need him, Ron? You know when to fold him, baby. to fold him. I mean, this is great effort, great effort. But guys, you know, guys are saying, oh, wow, play's over. I'm, who do I hit? Who do I hit? They're actually watching him instead of trying to chop down guys in front of them. You know what it looked like? It looked like the late Jim Valvano running out in the court after winning the Final Four, wanting to hug somebody. They couldn't find anybody to block. There's no, no one to hug for, that, for him on that play. They'll start a little bit deeper in their territory than what they thought. Right on the 10-yard line. Now Justin Forsett is in a tailback. Minnesota with a five-man line. Longshore feels a little bit of pressure. Is it complete? Yes, up to the 15-yard line to Hawkins again. Hawkins' fourth reception of the night. Well, tonight's Scholar Athletes of the Game are brought to you by TIAA Kreff. And for Minnesota, not only is he an outstanding football player, pretty good student in marketing, Matt Spay, 3.30 out of St. Michael, Minnesota, and Alex Mack, 3.47 out of Santa Barbara, California. Legal studies, we think that's lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> we think. Four set. Penalty flags are coming from everywhere as he's upended as he crosses the 20 yard line by Stibe again. Four set one of those little guys at 5'8, 186. Played for Grace Prep in Arlington. He had a coach we might recognize too, didn't he? Yes, he had a pretty good high school coach. Mike Barber, former NFL tight end. Said he wanted to go to Notre Dame, but the Irish said no. Oops. Oops. Holy on the offense, number 71. Penalties enforced half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Still second down. Second against Cameron tonight. Marshawn Lynch, Justin Forsett, that gives you quite an advantage because not only can the guys rush the football, they can also two, catch. That's a lot of yardage, Charles. It is. And look at Four, uh, Justin two, Forsett. Three. If he didn't need any more motivation, 999 yards last year. One shy of 1,000. You think he didn't do a few extra sprints, <laughs> a few extra lifts in the offseason to try and get that one yard? Should have been able to get him that yard, though, you know? You would think that they'd go back and find a yard somewhere, right? <laughs> stat guy should. 
Might bad be a lateral. Pass. Yeah, bad pass by Longshore. He was backpedaling. Had some pretty good pressure by that gopher front four. That's the first, I think, real bad pass we've seen a Longshore. He had one receiver with some misconnection, but that is kind of a bad pass. Yeah, watch out, watch as he tries to swing it out to the left of the screen. Is it a lateral or is it a forward pass? The line judge right there, all over the play. He was at the spot that would have signaled lateral. It was a forward pass. Nice call. Hawkins and Jackson now wide to the right. Third down and 13 from the seven. Play it safe. Four set. Bounce is still on his feet. Gets another block. Needs one more. Gets it up over the 25 yard line. Tremaine Banks, the second. Tackle of the night. You think he's just a little jitterbug, right? Dominique Barber misses. Is he right there? And then Banks finally taking him out. But a number of guys missed along the way, and they had a chance to take him down. And that's a first down. And that's one of the things Glenn Mason talked to us about yesterday. We get guys in third and long, and we let them up. And that could be a big spark play for Cal right there. Well, sure. Again, play action into the flat. Pass is caught again by Hawkins. He puts his head down to get up to the 40-yard line. Another first down for Cal. Hawkins now with five catches. People talk about the spread offense. That was a spread play. Inside zone, fake the handoff. Was able to move out to the outside in a nice touch by Nate Longshore, lofting it to the outside part of the field for his receiver to get it. That allowed him to make the move and get upfield. You'll hear people say spread anytime a team's in shotgun. That's not necessarily true. Depends on the type of play selection. That was one from the spread playbook. This playbook seems to be meshing quite well right now. Here comes the blitz by Minnesota. Lynch trying to get to the outside. Stops, cuts back inside, still on his feet. Loses the football. I think Minnesota may have it. Yes, they do. Once again, trying to make a little too much out of uh, nothing. Awesome. And this is hard for a coach to address. You know why? When do you tell a kid not to give extra effort, right? When do you tell a kid not to fight for an extra yard? Marshawn Lynch has done it twice now on the kickoff and here. And what he did was he went down and looked to me like the ball pounced out it, exactly. on the ground. He popped it out himself trying to get his balance. Well, now the Minnesota offense will take over. I wonder if they're going to review it. I think they are. Once Knee again, Ben causing the, the fumble. Yep. Ben Pope, Jim Coyne upstairs will be taking another look at it. Let's take a look at it from a couple of different angles. Watch Marshawn Lynch trying to get out of the tackle of Desi Steve. His knee is never down. He pops the ball out himself. And then he doesn't have he does yeah. not have possession on the extra play for the recovery. And Van de Steen gets Timer, it. Please set the game clock at 12 minutes and 27 seconds. 12 well, they See, want to add six seconds on it. Van de Steen does a nice job. He really does. And Desi Steig, the corner, did a real good job oh, making him work oh. for it. And that extra little effort on his part caused the, the fumble. Well, I guess they're not going to review it because they're going to go ahead and play it. First and 10, Daniels, nothing doing, right into the front of the line of Cal. It's a pretty good front four. Actually, you can throw a couple of other guys in there. They have seven guys that really play. Matt Malele out of Carson, California. He's on the stop. The boy, you look at Malele, Mebang, Tafisi, Maafala, that's a lot of beef up front. It is, and right now, Minnesota went to Matt Spaeth, their tight end, on the first play of the game. I've not gone back to him since. They need to make sure he's a big part of their offense tonight. Uh, Jack Simmons, a tight end, also in. Straight ahead running up over the 40-yard line, the 43-yard line. Clemson and Boston College are hooking it up. Let's check in on an update with Mark. Yeah, another one that went long for you guys. Double overtime again. Jad Dean's extra point blocked by Jolon Dunbar. So a chance for Boston College. That's LV Whitworth for the touchdown. Extra point was good. Second straight year. 
BC beats Clemson in overtime, guys. All right, Mark. Third down and five from the I four nation. Cupido is going to be changing the play. Cal brings six. Cupido steps up, goes deep down the left side for wheel right, tipped away. Good defense by Damian Hughes, who is their best cover. They went big on the protection, two receivers in the route. Watch Hughes, number 13. He stays inside wheel right, number one, the whole way. And was able to play the ball. Cupido had time to let it go. Didn't really step into it because he got a little bit of pressure at the end from Brandon Hampton. Hughes step for step. Hughes had a great comment after the Tennessee oh, loss. Man. He's one of the seniors, been a starter for the for a long time. He said, you know, it was humbling, but it was a good experience for this team. Well, it's a good experience if they turn it into a positive. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. You lose again, it isn't. He's its third punt of the night, and this is a high wobbly one. Great coverage by the Gophers right at the three yard line. That's the way it's supposed to be done. 10.43 left to play in the opening half. 32 yards on the kick. Lombard Street, most crooked street in America. Seinfeld, Chappelle, Cedric, Sykes. College football on TBS brought to you by TIAA Craft Financial Services for the greater good. And by Napa. Get the good stuff, Napa. Charles Davis, Craig Sager, Ron Thulin coming your way from Berkeley, California. We are tied up at 14 with the number 23 Golden Bears of Cal taking on the Gophers of Minnesota. Cal takes over on their own four yard line after an outstanding kick. They try to run it out up to the 10 yard line. Good pickup on the play. Marshawn Lynch again. Dominique Barber, his third tackle of the night. One thing you look at uh, Marshawn Lynch and looking at him in practice and, and everything else, he looks healthier than he's ever looked. He also looks a little faster and stronger than maybe in years past. Another year of growth and maturity, another year in the weight room. They say he got a little dinged up at Tennessee, a little thigh or ankle problem, but not running that way this evening. Did you notice how he held, held the ball on mm -hmm. that run? Both hands wrapped up the big skin. Yeah, second and four opens up the playbook for this spread offense. And a quick shot to Jackson. He's going to be pushed back, caught the ball at about the 15-yard line. Banks his third stop. Now we've got penalty flags thrown all over the place. Things really get a little chippy. A poor play by Deshaun Jackson. Yeah. Because he's going to be the one that gets nailed with the penalty. And they were out there near first down yardage. And now they'll be going to second and long again, backed up. Second time we've seen that tonight from Cal if this call goes the way I expect. After the play, personal foul on the offense, number one. Penalty for us. Half the distance to the goal. The down counts. Down will be three. See, at that point. That's pretty good acting, too. It's good acting, but, but why, even, why does he even do this? All right, yeah. play's over. You're done. See, that, that makes no sense. And he's up in the head area, too. Uh, now, you, now you put yourself back again behind the eight ball. That's right. They, they kept talking about establishing a rhythm on offense. Mm hmm Right? Very discordant right now. Okay? <laughs> you can't establish a rhythm when you're playing behind the chain so much. That's uncharacteristic for a Jeff Tedford team. This team usually plays in control all the time. I think it's part of the expectations that came into this year. I think year you're right. You're from right. external, mm -hmm. not the internal. The external, guys like us who picked them high. People who thought they'd go to Tennessee and win when it didn't happen. Boy, the bandwagon got light, didn't it? And in a hurry. And these kids feel, I think, a little extra pressure at Cal. On the play, the result of the play, the first down. The dead ball foul came after that. Therefore, we have first down in 10 for California. Now well, they get a little bit of a break, but pick it up on that point, Charles. It's not only the expectations nationally, it's right here on campus because, face it, prior to Jeff Tedford, there were no expectations on campus. Now these guys have to face it every day. Yeah, they used to go to where, go, they've gone from wearing hooded sweatshirts so no one would know who they are to wearing their gear so everyone knows who they are. And then last week was a tough week going on campus after the loss. Yeah, it's first and 10. 
Let's check in with Craig Sager. More on that. Sags. Well, we know we talked about the ranking dropping after the loss to Tennessee from 9th to 23rd, but one ranking remains the same. That is Cal being named the number one public university in the entire country by U.S. News and World Report. That based a lot, though, on the Nobel laureates of the Pulitzer Prize winners and the faculty. But if you look at the stands right here, this football team, what Jeff Tedford has done, has brought a whole new slew of people that normally didn't follow Cal. 42,135 season tickets this year, mm -hmm. all-time record. Yeah, that's a great point, Craig. For the fourth straight year, they've broken the season ticket record under Jeff Tedford. I think my college had a lottery winner. <laughs> Long short pass complete. First down. Lavelle Hawkins having a great game tonight up to the 24-yard line. Mario Reese on the coverage. Neil Allen helping out. Hawkins six catches already this evening. Nice job by Lavelle Hawkins getting into the seam. Nate Longshore delivering a strike. That was one of the better timed pass plays we've seen this evening from Cal. Mm -hmm. Got it to him in a position to catch it and pick up extra yards with his legs afterwards. Now he comes to the near side. One of the things that separates Longshore from the other quarterbacks, he is the most consistent thrower of the three. And we're seeing it this evening. Here comes the pressure. Steps up. Throws into the flat, pass caught again, another first down for Cal. Deshaun Jackson uses every bit of his six foot frame to pull that down. 13 yards on the pickup. Oh, no catch, they're saying now. It's where the foot came down yeah. initially. Only need one inbounds for college. Where did the first one come down? Jackson goes up. First foot down. And see, uh, yep. see, what they're saying is because the official was right on the play, yeah. the heel hit the white. And then they wanted the late hit. So they wanted That's that what they were the booing play. about. Deion Hightower kind of put a little hit on Jackson, no call. I think there was so much focus on whether he was inbounds or not yeah. that Deion Hightower caught a break. Instead, it's second and 10 from the 24. Or set. Takes his time, shows patience running the football up over the 30 to the 33 yard line. And our first and 10 line is being brought to you by Napa. And they're going to need two to get to the Napa first and 10 line. Third down and two, 753. Clock running here in quarter number two. Nate Longshore has done a nice job tonight. 13 of 18, 175 yards, a couple of touchdowns. David Lockwood, the Minnesota defensive coordinator, got the hat on backwards, trying to find an answer to Longshore. He keeps it. Got the first down, not his forte, but he does get the first down up over the 35 to the 37. And we have players again kind of getting into it at about the 40-yard line, Charles. Nice play. This is like the old single wing, Ron. Just inside, four set number 20 leading. Doesn't need to block it. He won because the first down lane was wide open on a, was like a mini quarterback draw. Was that Dominic Barber getting a little hand up in there? After the play, dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Number 23, 15-yard penalty, first down. It was Barber. Well, he didn't get caught the first time, got caught that time. Take a look at the top. Locked up in the block. See the head? The first play was right there, was yeah. the, the hand to the head that you noticed, Ron. All right, getting a hand up there in the head of the receiver, Robert, Robert Jordan, number 11. What is that, five personal fouls now? in the game it certainly feels that way Longshore looking deep has a man wide open touchdown Cal to Sean Jackson but we have a penalty flag at the 45 but it's going against Minnesota the touchdown will stand This is a route by Deshaun Jackson. Desi Stive, number 11, stepped up and then back deep, helping cover. Deron Cooley, number 26, the junior college transfer. And then Nate Longshore stays. And Steve Ooh. Davis with a late hit, getting down on the ankles of Nate Longshore. And he didn't need that. Remember, he missed most of last season with a fractured left ankle. Boy, that's a dangerous hit there. Steve Davis, I don't think he was trying to be malicious. Not he was trying so to either. hustle to make a play, but he was late getting there and got on the legs of the quarterback. But all in all, Ron, the route by Deshaun Jackson was nothing fancy. 
Desi, he just out ran people. Desi Stive guessed wrong, stepped out of the way, never rerouted the receiver at the corner position, and then he just ran past Deron Cooley. He just out-athleted them in the second game. Well, Minnesota was 97th versus the pass last year in college football out of 117. And already tonight they've given up 175 yards plus. The extra point is good. Minnesota had some spark with a 199-yard touchdown on a kickoff return from Dominic Jones. But Cal comes right back and answers, and they have the lead by seven. Does a promise come with an expiration date? Is it good for a month? Francisco somewhere in that fog. And right now it's 21 to 14, Cal leading Minnesota. Cal already put a lot of yards on the board. 319 yards. Minnesota 106 yards, but 71 of those came on their opening drive. So they've only had 35 yards since that opening touchdown drive. Remember though, Cal's defense hasn't been on the field in a while because after the previous score, as we look at the yardage there, they've already gone past, or just about to go past last week. Now they're gonna administer the penalty to Longshore. Remember after the previous score, the kickoff return by Dominic Jones meant the Cal's defense didn't hit the field. That's right. Now Jones and Payne are deep, but they'll kick it off for the second time from the 50-yard line. Charles, you want to guess if they're going to kick it out of the end zone? <laughs> well, after the return last time, they may yeah. very well say, you know, Tom Schneider, see if you can hit it all the way over the net. Yeah. Let's make sure he doesn't bring it back. Let's see what they do. Please put it in the bay, will you? Try to split the uprights. They'll take it over first and ten from their own 20-yard line for Minnesota. Just a moment ago, we saw Nate Longshore taking a pretty vicious hit, but let's take you back last year. Opening game, they had high expectations, and then this happened. Back to pass, buckled over, broken ankle. And tonight, Charles, I'll tell you, he's got to be a little gun shy, but he didn't show. It looks like the same kind of play. Still focused downfield after releasing the ball. Steve Davis just late getting to him. In both cases, neither guy trying to be malicious, but when you're around the quarterback's ankles, he's awfully vulnerable. Now, Cupido rolling, 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 looking, nobody open. It's going to be intercepted by Damian Hughes. Had five interceptions last year. He's got one this season. Eighth career interception for Damian Hughes, and Cupido wasn't on the same page. Now, he's trying to hit Logan Payne, number 84. He's expecting Logan Payne to come back. See, he thought he was just going to run a deep out, deep comeback route. And when Logan Payne kept going, Damian Hughes saw back into the quarterback, and Brian Cupido throwing it to a spot. Ends up getting, being the victim of an interception. I really think that his receiver hurt him on that route. I think so, too. It's a fifth-year senior, third-year starter. I don't think he just threw that one up for grabs. First interception of the year for Brian Cupido. Penalty flag is thrown. A little flea flicker. Look out. Looked like Jackson wants to throw it. Now he tucks it. Needs a block. Penalty flag is down. Remember, he is just going to step out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. John Shevlin right there. You know one thing that was well covered by, oh, David, yes. by David Lockwood's defense. They never even came close to being fooled on the fake by the receiver on the option. Now a little movement on the line. Jeff Tedford is the architect of this great turnaround of this Cal program. When he first took over, he told his players and his coaches to hold the rope. That was their mantra. On the offense, only six players on the line of scrimmage. Penalties declined. Down will be two. Well, let's take a look at our KFC bowl poll question. Can Cal make its first Rose Bowl since 1959? You can text message at 88222 right now. A for yes. B for no. Back to 59, they lost to Iowa 38-12, by the way, when Bob Jeter had 194 yards rushing. Bob Jeter's um, son, Rob, head basketball coach at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee now. 
Lynch takes a hit, bounces to the outside, little stiff arm. Has some running room. Runs over his own man as he gets over the 40 down to the 39-yard line. You could hear Marshawn Lynch's pads popping up here, Charles. Right, it goes back to something we observed a little while ago. How do you tell a young man not to continue to get an extra effort? And he ends up running through tackles on this play. Look at that, Dominic Jones, number two, unable to corral him before he gets downfield and picks up a first down. You, know, you always say, hey, at some point the play is over. With Marshawn Lynch, mm -hmm. he never thinks a play is over. We were talking to David Lockwood about that, the defensive coordinator of Minnesota. He knows that. This guy's dangerous. A drive again. Again to the outside. Can't tackle him with the shoestrings. He gets down to the 30-yard line. Steve Davis on the stop. He's got a couple of tackles tonight. There's David Lockwood. And he said, listen, these guys got to keep playing on this guy to the whistle. And when you hear people talk about how tough it is to tackle in space, this is a tackle in space, meaning it's just you and the runner or the receiver in open field. Very difficult to make that kind of a play for Tremaine Banks. But look at last week, 74 yards already today, 67. Justin Forsett's really enjoying this week. Already 44 more yards oh, yeah. than last week in Knoxville. And Forsett is back in. And he has it. He bounces to the outside. Looking for a block from David Gray. Gets a little bit of it. Inside the 20. They'll mark him down to the 15-yard line. Pickup of 16 on the play. Justin Forsett, just a junior, 235 yards against New Mexico State last year. His role sort of went down in the final four games of 05 because Marshawn Lynch got healthy. But they realize they've got two very potent tailbacks. Yeah, it's an uh, assortment of riches at the tailback position. They're so good that Marcus O'Keefe barely touches mm -hmm. the ball, and he'd be a starter at a number of places. Forsett again. Tries to get down to the 10, maybe the 11-yard line. Shevlin with his second stop of the night. Closing in on five minutes left here in the opening half. Tell you, Cal's putting up the yardage, but they're only up by seven. They're closing in on 360 yards in the first half. See, what they're banking on right now is a little bit of attrition. Yeah. Continue to pound the football. Continue to lean on the guys from Minnesota. Continue to find those little gaps right now that they're hoping will become bigger gaps in the third and fourth quarter. Down second and six, long short. Quick three-step drop, quick look in, quick touchdown. Deshaun Jackson again. Jamal Harris, number 15, knows that he has to sit inside on this coverage. You want the ball, ball to go outside of anywhere in that situation. He knew that he could not get beat inside, yet that still happened. Nice route by Deshaun Jackson and a good throw by Nate Longshore. His third touchdown reception of the night. The extra point is good. He had seven touchdown receptions last year. He already has four this year. Well, I tell you, we talked to the, at the top of the show, these Cal wide receivers had some speed, Gerald. They've got speed. They've got moves. They've got hands. You take away a couple personal fouls tonight, and they've been awfully productive. Lavelle Hawkins has had a terrific night. Great concentration. And really, he's their third receiver in most situations. And Deshaun Jackson has really come to the front again this evening. He's the guy they call special. They say he's football savvy, really enjoys the game, really works at it. And with his talent, he knows how to rip things up. But look at the Bill Hawkins, already over 100 yards. Deshaun Jackson, not too far behind. Robert Jordan, Eric Beacon, who could have had a second catch and had much more yardage on the first play of the game when he got a drop. Well, he ties the record for most touchdown receptions in a game by a Cal player. Cal with 371 yards, but they have more than doubled the plays of Minnesota. Minnesota's only had 19 offensive plays in this game for 106 yards. So, so dynamic at the wide receiver position. All those guys trying to outdo each other. Dominic Jones has a 99-yard kickoff return. Not this time. Gets up to the 17-yard line. 
This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of the University of California, a member of the Pac-10 Conference. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the University of California or the Pac-10 Conference. 28-14, our score, 426 left to play in quarter number two. That's David Lockwood talking to his charges on the defensive side. It's a huge offensive possession for Minnesota, Ron. They've got to get that defense a little bit of rest. Daniels looked impressive early on, but Cal has stacked him up since then. Gets up to the 24-yard line. First hit, Mickey Pimentel, senior out of San Diego, California. He is so versatile at that linebacker spot. They've got a lot of guys back there like that. Yeah, Mickey Pimentel, a guy that they can use to rush the passer or drop into coverage. You've got a few different guys, as you mentioned, who are versatile at that spot. That's a good first down run for Minnesota. Daniels lowers the head, gets up over the 25-yard line to the 27-yard line. Craig Sager, give us more. Well, Alex Daniels obviously has not been in a flow. Looked good in that first series, but obviously with the punts and the turnovers and all, hasn't been able to get a lot of carries. Quite the opposite over here on the Cal sideline. After every series, Jeff Tedford goes and has a conversation with Nate Longshore. He said, keep it going. Great pass. Don't let up. Marshawn Lynch is in a flow. So are you. Let's go rolling. Right. You see the numbers there, Charles. Last five drives, 45 yards, three punts and an interception. Out into the flat, Logan Payne. Penalty flag is thrown as he goes over the 35-yard line. And to tag what Craig said, Justin Forsett is also in a nice flow. Yep. So they have two backs that they can alternate for gaining positive yardage on every series now. This may come back because it could be a hold on the receiver. It is. I think it was Ernie Wheelwright, number one, blocking on the swing pass. Holding. On the us, number one. Ten yard penalty, swallow the foul, still first down. He's number one. See right there? All you want to do in that situation, your receiver, keep your hands inside, get engaged with the DB, and if you just dance with mm -hmm. him, you don't necessarily have to take him to the ground or grab cloth. He should be okay and able to make a cut off of your block. First down and 16. We have a new running back in the ball game. Pinnix, he's stacked up again. Let's go back to Atlanta. Here's Mark Fine. All right, Ron, here's what we got coming up for you on the singular wireless halftime report Ohio State and Texas. We're going to check in on number one and number two. Also, a bit of a surprise in the Penn State Notre Dame game and the potential for a monumental upset of a top ranked team. All that more coming up on the singular wireless halftime report. I'm not going to give you any clues, but going, Florida State it? was not leading at halftime. Now we have an illegal substitution against Minnesota, and they're going to back it up again. Yeah, that's Matt Spaeth. And right now what he's trying to say is he gave one personnel grouping, you know, here I, I, now you want me out. And then Glenn Mason wants a timeout to possibly timeout. regroup. University of Minnesota, timeout number one. Yeah, I heard him scream yeah. timeout. I think he just wants to regroup his guys because if they don't make yardage here, don't be surprised if Cal goes to the timeout game. That's right. Get the football back and try and get one more before the half. This is huge for Minnesota. They don't want to give the ball up again, especially where the field position is now. That's right. And give Cal one more shot at it with time on the clock. Now this Minnesota team really pointed towards this game. They knew that this was a big game. Nothing against Kent State, but Glenn Mason's squad knew that this Cal team had a lot of preseason hype. And this would be a barometer of where they are as far as this season. Yeah, and they open up with Kent State at Kent State, a game they figured to handle. And then next week they get Temple at home, who was absolutely trampled today by Louisville. So you figure with those games you should be okay, okay? But the Cal game is the big one. We don't see that one on there because we're playing it today. But Temple next week at home, if they could go and get Cal, they were looking at a roaring 3-0 start mm -hmm. before opening conference at Purdue, a team that they beat in overtime, I believe, a year ago when Purdue was ranked number 11 in the country at the time. Of course, last year they started out hot, had that big win over Michigan, the first one in 19 years. But the problem with the team last year, they couldn't follow up the big wins with other wins. Cupido looking. Daniels has it. Got some running room up over the 35. He has the first down and then some. 
brought down at the 45 yard line. Pittman telling Thomas Deku on the stop. Love. Good looking pass and run. Love the call there, Ron, by Mitch Browning, the offensive coordinator. It's a screen. And they send everyone deep, and then they're able to just toss it into an open area to the big back, Alex Daniels, who shows nice hands for a guy who was a former linebacker. He's not carried the ball seriously since high school. That's amazing. See, what it did, too, is it took Cal's ability to play the timeout game away there. Hupino's going to put it up again. Pressure from the back side. The deep out caught at the 40 yard line. Down to the 35 as Ernie Wheelwright, his first reception of the ball game. Pickup of 21 on the play. Nice route, number one, Ernie Wheelwright. Able to break it off and get to the sideline. He has good bloodlines. His grandfather, Ernest Wheelwright, played six or seven seasons in the NFL. That's not his pick. Come on. I think we saw him in the longest yard. Longest yard. yard. Here you go. Actor. Did a great job. Caught a touchdown pass in it, didn't he? In, 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 against the guards. <laughs> we got everything. <laughs> 2 14 to play in half. First and 10 from the 34. The Gophers out of the run. Pinnix inside the 35. Put him down at the 33 yard line. Log on to Rivals.com and ask Charles Davis a question. Find Ask Charles only on Rivals.com, your online home for college football. Charles is in charge of that <laughs> website. Hey, Ron, here's something very quickly. Minnesota went from trying to survive this half mm -hmm. to a different mindset now. Now they're thinking of scoring before That's this right. half is over after that big play. No longer survival. Pinnix lowers his head down to the 20-yard line. Plenty of time left, 136. Deku with his third stop of the night. So the this is important too for Minnesota just from a, a mental standpoint. Mental standpoint, it, you know, Cal had a chance to really put a, put the pressure on. That doesn't appear like it's going to happen. Minnesota gets themselves right back into this ball game. Mm -hmm. They're able to get a score here, but it also lets Cal know that they're not going to go away this year. That's evening. right. Decker wide to the right. This is an offense averaged 495 yards last year. Where's Matt Spaeth? On the ground, nothing doing. Pinnix out of Newark, New Jersey. Last week's second career 100 yard game. Last year, you remember, you go for fans the 206 yards he had against Michigan State. He also has great running ability. And he's expected to be the starter this year. Mm -hmm. Coming into the season for the move to Daniels. And they actually started EJ Jones, a true freshman at Kent State before he hurt an ankle. Second down and nine inside of 50 seconds to play in the half. Cupido changing things up. Play clock at seven. Penix again, nothing doing. Getting it in the middle of the field. Third down, we'll call it about eight. Brandon Meebane came up with the first hit. The senior out of Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles. He's on the watch list of four national awards. And Glenn Mason wants a timeout and finally going to get it. He's very upset by yeah. how long it took to get the timeout. He was trying to get the attention of the linesman who was trying to help spot the football. But that's one of those situations when you want a timeout, you have to have players run to an official and get in his face and signal the timeout. Well, wonder no more. Log on to VeryFunnyAt.com and revel in the commercialism including ones that are too racy for the U.S. Where did you learn how to do that? From your brother. Cal fans making a little noise. Third down and nine for Minnesota. Ball's on the 20. They have only one timeout left here in the half. There's 27 seconds left. Penalty flag. Had a little twitch, I think. Yeah. That'll back him up five. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense from the 12. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Six penalties for Glenn Mason's Gophers tonight. And that was Mike Chambers, a red shirt freshman, wide receiver. Third down and 14. Still with 27 seconds left in the first half. If Minnesota ends up only kicking a field goal here, it's a blown opportunity before the half. 
Penix alone in the backfield. Wheel right, wide to the right. Looking for Wheel right. Almost picked off, caught. Inside the 20 down to the 17 yard line. <laughs> you know why I'm laughing? Sidquan Thompson last week had similar plays against yeah. Tennessee, but those went for touchdowns. And the clock is down to eight. Are they aware? Uh, he didn't go out of bounds, they're saying, I guess. Nope, and the clock is about, and now Minnesota finally gets it. They call timeout with two seconds left. Never stepped out. So now they will have to have the field goal. Look at it again. There's the play mm. by Hughes. Nice concentration by Wheelwright, and he's tackled inbounds. Yeah. So the clock should be shot clock should continue to run. Well, like you were saying, Charles, that this, this is something that we, we saw Minnesota had a pretty good drive going here, and they were definitely answering the call trailing 28-14. But now, if you just kick the field goal, and that's not a given, I must say, no. that is a big loss for them. No, it hasn't been a given in the kicking game for Minnesota for the last couple of years, but they went from what I called surviving, mm -hmm. deep in their own territory, to when they moved the ball on the screen to Daniels, then another big pass to Wheelwright. Now you're thinking attack, let's get a score. But yeah. They grounded themselves a little bit here. That's very difficult. Now you try to field goal. If Cal gets out of here, even with a field goal, they've got to feel pretty good about it because the momentum had shifted to Minnesota. Now they're going to mark the ball right at the 25-yard line. It'll be a 35-yard attempt for Janini. We'll call it officially 34. Four of eight from this distance, his career. Good snap, good hold, good kick. Yeah, got a little pole on that one, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. He had the right doink <laughs> to go through. Yeah, at least it's better than a goose egg on there. One more look at this kick again. And it is good. That makes it 28-17. Here's Craig Seger. Well, Coach, we were wondering how this team was going to respond after last week. What's your assessment of how they played in this first half? Well, not bad. We need to play better in the second half. We're getting penalized too much. Uh, we've got to cut that out, of course. But I uh, thought our defense is playing pretty well and stopping the run. And uh, we've got to play a four quarters here against these guys. These guys are a good football team. What about your offense, Nate Longshore? How do you think he's been doing? He's been sharp. He's been very sharp. He's really thrown some nice balls. He's doing a nice job of escaping the rush. And so uh, you've got to put four quarters together, though. All right, thanks a lot. They put two together so far, 28-17. And when we come back, Mark Fine will be with Atlanta with our singular wireless halftime report. Saturday night college football presented by Orbitz as we get set to start the second half. Right now, Cal leads Minnesota 28 to 17. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Rob Thulin. I'd have to say we had a little bit of everything. We've had the <laughs> kickoff return, 99 yards for a touchdown. We had some penalties. We've had some great passes and some outstanding runs. But I think if you're Minnesota, you look at the score and you say, wait a minute, we're still in this football game. In a big way. And that means don't change your personality. They get the ball to start the second half. Running has been their forte. They need to continue to do that well. Give Brian Cupido, their quarterback, a chance to make some plays off of play action and bootleg. Well, let's talk about Cal on the other hand. They want a balanced offense. It doesn't get any more balanced than this as far as number of plays. 21 rushes, 21 passes. Exactly what you want if you're Cal and getting nice production from both areas. Now let's go to some of the highlights and some of the numbers from that first half of play. And it started out uh, with Cal throwing the football and they did it well. Nate Longshore 234 yards passing 15 of 21 throwing the ball. You heard his coach Jeff Tedford talk about how efficient he was. The numbers bear that out running the ball. Justin Forsett 65 yards Marshawn Lynch 67 yards running the ball. Cal likes that what they don't like are the penalties. Some of them a variety of mental errors that have hurt them. And we look at the scoring from the first half. Alex Daniels with a touchdown. Robert Jordan and Deshaun Jackson, the first of two for him. The big kickoff return by Dominic Jones, 99 yards that tied the ball game. And then Deshaun Jackson deep into the secondary. Catches one, and then Deshaun Jackson one more time. His third touchdown of the first half. 
He's so quick and so good, Ron. I shortchanged him a score. I tell you what, he is an outstanding wide receiver for this Cal team. In fact, he was uh, the top player in Southern California when he was a senior. And there's no doubt he won the Glenn Davis Award as their best player for Southern California. We saw Glenn nice Mason. Hats off. Hats off. I'll tell you, he had 32 wins over the last four years. Best four year win total at Minnesota since 0205. That's a long time ago. He was the 1999 Big Ten Coach of the Year. But I know that he says, listen, guys, we got to start playing just a little bit of defense. One thing this Minnesota defense hasn't done, they didn't do it last year, having problems already this year. Well, one game, of course. They got to force turnovers. They're going to have to force some turnovers here in the second half to slow down this Cal offense. And they will get the ball to start the second half. Jones backed up deep. Let's check in with Craig Sager. Well, Glenn Mason not at all happy with his defense. He said we let a bust in our coverage. We also aren't tackling well. He says I know we're young, but that's no excuse for not tackling. I said, what about Alex Daniels not being able to get into a rhythm? He said, hey, listen, everybody expects him to be Bronco Nagurski. He's not. He's only been a running back for two weeks. It's going to take time. He's a work in progress. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, Craig, and he, he talked about that beginning of the week because a lot of fans were going, hey, this guy's pretty good. He goes, hey, wait a minute. Still a lot of football to be played. <laughs> gets up to about the 20. You know how fans are, though. They see somebody and they get pretty excited over him, and, and I, for good reason. And I think Glenn Mason is just trying to lessen expectations to allow this young guy to really be fully integrated into the running back position because there's more to it than just carrying the football. Mm -hmm. As we look at the production in the first half, Cupido, nice numbers, the one interception on a broken route by a receiver. Daniels, we've talked about. There's the guy, Matt Spate. One catch, the first play of the game. I still think they've got to get him much more involved. And that was the plan coming into this year. Caught by Payne. He dances out right at the 30 yard line. That should be good enough for a first down. Warrell Williams thought he read the play and jumped the route underneath and just barely missed. And it turned into a first down for Minnesota. Watch number one. See him right there, the outside linebacker. Then a good block on the corner by Ernie Wheelwright, number one on Sid Quan Thompson. And it was a first down in the 31. Important opening drive here in the second half for Minnesota. Cupido straight back. Steps up in the pocket off the hands of Daniels. You just talked about it, Charles. There's more to being a running back in college football than just running the football. There's the running, of course. There's catching the ball, running your routes out of the backfield. There's pass protection. So that with blitz pickup, blocking as a lead guy for another runner. So many different things rolling through this young man's mind as he gets back integrated in the tailback position. Big Ten co-offensive player of the week this past seven days. Second down and ten. Three-step drop. Cupido tucks it. The defense closes, but not before he gets to the 40-yard line. He'll be about a yard short of the first down. Bishop and Williams were closing fast. Cupido saw that and realized that could be hurtful. Very heady play by the fifth-year senior quarterback. The route was gone right away, and he saw plenty of open territory. I like him diving headlong, trying to get a little bit of extra yardage, yet still protecting the ball. Big third and short right here. 12 straight games. He's thrown a touchdown pass, looking to stretch that to 13. Short yardage situation. They have the first down. Justin Valentine, the junior out of Columbus, Ohio, Eastmore Academy. Had four carries against Kent State for nine yards, scored a touchdown. Now, this is classic Minnesota football. I mean, they, they also, they show the run so well, but they set you up by doing what we're seeing right now, Charles. And they have a nice offensive line, cut blocking in the interior. Zone blocking, able to move the pile. Daniels, good defense by Cal, swarming defense. The line did a great job of stretching it out, led by Matt Malele. He had the first hit, and then Meebane, you straighten him up, Meebane can finish things off. Nice observation by stretching the play out and not leaving a gap for Daniels to fall into or dive into from the running back position. That allowed pursuit from backside to knife into the gap and make the play. There you see the numbers on Matt Malele. He's considered a run stopper. Second down and 11. 
Payne moves out wider to the left. They're looking for Payne. Looking in. No. Over the middle. Caught at the 50 yard line. It is Spade. His second catch of the afternoon. Bishop's fifth tackle. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Napa. And for Minnesota to get to that beautiful yellow line, they need to go three yards. Big third down for the Gophers, Charles. The routes that Minnesota has run here to start the second half have been mainly of the short variety. And Cal has really been all over them for the most part. See if they try and loosen them up at some point. Valentine and Daniels. They try to throw it back to the left. Wide open is Spaeth, and they just can't get it into his hands. You can't blame Cupido, though, because he was backpedaling all the way. This is kind of a this is similar to the first play of the ball game with a little throwback. But the first time Matt Spaeth was on the on side of the play, the strong side. This time he came from weak side crossing over. And because of the pass rush, Brian Cooper wasn't able to get enough on the ball. Otherwise, I think Matt Spaeth might still be running. Now they're going to have to kick it away. No snap. He almost put his knee on the ground. High spiraling kick. Jackson at the 20, and he is brought down right there. Thirty yards on the kick, zero on the return. Minnesota needs to take advantage of every opportunity. Just a Nats eyelash away on that one. Turn all the horror and all the blonde jokes you can handle. It's not working. It's backwards. What do I do? The Shark Fest starts with Scary Movie 2 tomorrow at 8 on TBS. So over 55,000 on hand, just a few blocks away from that house. The fraternity house, and Cal takes over, first and 10, on their own 21-yard line. Just about three and a half minutes gone by here in the third. Lynch bounces out, good stiff arm, able to get four yards when he was stacked up. Tremaine Banks now with five stops on the uh, evening. How about the strength of Marshawn Lynch? This is one of the better tacklers on the team, Mike Sherrills. The starting middle linebacker, one on one with Lynch, and he runs right through him. That allows extra yardage for Cal before Tremaine Banks is able, able to take him down. Jordan and Hawkins wide to the left. They only need three for the first down. Looking left, long short. Short of the first down. Robert Jordan on the reception. That'll bring up a third down. All right, you guys, we're going to get a first down bears right here. First down bears. Uh, some more numbers from that opening half. Nate Longshore, you talk about a pretty good first half. 238 yards thrown, four TDs, no picks. Yeah, and Deshaun Jackson, the beneficiary of three of those touchdown passes. Third down and four now. Longshore from the shotgun, pump fakes. Wanted his receiver to go, didn't, got held up. Marshawn Lynch draws a couple penalty flags, though, because the defense grabbed him, I think. I think John Shevlin may have tried to get a hand on him. Lynch tried to hook it and go. That appeared to be the vicinity of where the flags were thrown. Remember the rule in college is you can have your hands on him until the ball's in the air. Once it's in the air, hands have to go off. Top right here, Shevlin 46. See him right there hooking Lynch. Ball's in the air while he's hooking. That's probably the flag. Prior to the pass being thrown, holy on mm. the defense, number 11. Ten yard penalty for the previous spot, automatic first down. Greg Sager, what do you have for us? Well, the six officials were conferring after that play. That's right, the six officials. We started the game with seven, but the umpire, Jerry Meyerhoff, suffered a hamstring pull. He is all right, but he's in the locker room. They've gone to their six-man mechanics and officiating. Ron? And they, they're prepared for that, too. Yes, the back judge moved up to the umpire position. Hawkins again, who's having an outstanding evening, up to the 40-yard line, a short pickup of about three. Dominic Jones now with five tackles. and. Making the zone, see the pull there by number 75, Eric Robertson. We saw that play in the first half. Pull the guard up front, a little waggle pass. 
That's a play that can be run either from the spread offense or what is commonly known as conventional. They run the same type of a play from under center, pulling the guard to protect the front side for the quarterback. Vegan in motion. Lynch left side. Boy, he looks like he doesn't have anything there. Puts his head down, lowers his body, gets over the 45, and it'll be close to the first down. Garrett Brown, the true freshman out of New Haven, Connecticut, and Steve Davis on the stop. I'll tell you the problem, Minnesota, Charles, I'm looking at the uh, the tackle count here. You have a cornerback with five, a free safety with four, right, a free safety with five, and another cornerback with five. Three. Most of the tackles five, in the secondary. Two, Which to me, from what I've seen tonight, One, two, been a lot of broken tackles and missed tackles in the first two levels. Linebackers and defensive front. Third down and short. They'll get the first down with Byron, Brian Storer. Byron Storer. They call him the bus in Modesto, California. In fact, they rode over here on Storer's charter buses. Yes, the Storer family has their own bus service, coach bus service. So we're outside the hotel. And there's Cal boarding buses, and there it says, store coachways on the side. I love it. So there's no chance that a guy who plays running back is got, and his family owns a bus company <laughs> will have any other nickname but the bus. Well, they also like calling him the bull, too. I think he fits both. Whichever one. I just yeah, call, him, I call him sir. There you go. Longshore cease pressure, and he is going to be dropped. Mario Reese, the senior out of Mableton, Georgia, Pebble Brook High School. Comes up with his second sack of the year, the first of the evening for this Minnesota defense. And this is a guy we've been, you know, we were looking to see big plays from all night. Played so well against Kent State. He just went right around Eric Began, number 83, before he was able to step out and even get a hand on him. Terrific speed by Mario Reese, which he put to good use last week, running down mm -hmm. a receiver who appeared to be going for a touchdown. Knocked the ball free and recovered it. Six sacks already this year for the Gopher defense. They only had 15 all of last year. Second and 18. Long short. Plenty of time. Receiver falls down. Penalty flag comes in. Eric Began was tripped up on the play. The penalty flags, they did not hesitate to throw him. Looks like it may have been Mario Reese getting, the, getting caught up with him. See Began 83 running against Reese. Is that Reese right there? No. No. Oh. Yeah, that is Reese, 48. number 48, and he gave a little push at the end. Ball's in the air. Interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty, previous spot, automatic first down. You know what kind of coverage that was, Ron? Hmm. Tactile. You know, he's got his <laughs> hand on him. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. going to run this route by feel with you. Had his hand on him the whole way, and then at the end, how about a little extra shove? Oh, was the ball in the air? I didn't know that. Darn! Right, we're slowly, <laughs> but sure. Well, penalties have been a problem uh, for this gopher team. Ready? Seven penalties, 80 yards. See, I don't think the head coach there for Minnesota sees the humor. <laughs> That's right. In that last play. Make that eight penalties, 95 yards. They have more yards and penalties than they do rushing the football. Third down and three. Or first down, I should say. Long short. Steps up in the pocket, has a man caught inside the 10. No, he dropped it. Sam DeSau trying to get the reception, had it in his hands, couldn't finish it and put it away. Great play by the man they call Mighty Mouse, Dominic Jones. We saw him on the field in pregame, Ron. He was ready to play. Great timing. And Sam DeSau tries his best to haul it in, but Dominic Jones stays with it. See him, he rakes at the ball, and then as he's going down, he's pulling at his arms. So that kept DeSau from being able to really cradle the football in. Second down and 10. Deep into the flat, short hops it, intended for Deshaun Jackson. Let's check in on that Florida State Troy game with Mark Fine. Mark. Well, Troy's giving them everything they could handle, guys, but here comes FSU. Down 17 to 10, six minutes to go. Drew Weatherford to Chris Davis. They tie it up then with about two minutes in the game. Joe Surratt, more yards rushing right there than they had against Miami the entire game. They're up 24-17, guys. I'll tell you what, that, uh, that's a little too close for Bobby down there. Tough to go from getting up from Miami on a Labor Day night to convincing your kids that Troy's going to give you trouble. On third down and 10, Longshore's pass juggled but caught right at the first down marker. This time, Dessau put the hands all over it. His first catch of the year. 
Rob, my first impression is that this is an excellent battling catch by DeSaw because watch Tremaine Banks number four. I think he's all over him right now. See that? And he actually had pulled the upfield arm. So for DeSaw to be able to catch that without really having two arms is a really fine catch. Well, they're glad to get Sam DeSaw back and also David Gray. That gives them a very potent core at wide receivers. They're going to measure for the first down. Yeah, I think that was a very physical catch by a guy who's 5'11", 195 pounds. Yeah. He battled a bigger defensive back or about the same size DB and beat him. Second and is this very short yardage here? What do you do? You go I for go. it. I yeah, go. I'm absolutely. not even thinking about it. Well, hold a second. Do I have number 10 in the backfield? Yeah. Okay, I'm going. And do I have 38? <laughs> so he's got a number of people that he can go to. A lot of options right here. And he only needs about six inches. Don't forget, Nate Longshore can just put his head down and bowl through if he wants a 6 5 2 33. Well, needs to get right over the 33 yard line. Hey, Thu, how big a gambler is Jeff Tedford here right now? Go for the whole Little nine yards. Action, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. How, big, how big of a gambler is he? I think Bob Stoops would. A number of people have done it. Uh, let's see. Somebody call a timeout? Yes, they did. So Jeff Tedford wanted to talk about it, and he is not happy about that, that he had to burn a timeout. Not too far from here, the Berkeley Marina, a beautiful setting, people taking advantage of it today, but here, Cal leads by 11. KFC's Build Your Own Variety Bucket. .com for the best deals on Vegas rooms, shows, and more, book now at Vegas.com. And by Aflac, ask about it at work. Back inside, fourth down and one. Now you don't gamble. You got to get the first down. Longshore puts his head down, bulls his way. Minnesota did a great job of pulling him back. Depends on the spot. Now one official has it inside the 33-yard line, well inside, and that's what it is. Yeah, I thought forward progress. I had no doubt he was in there. The flurry came after his progress had been stopped. Sets up a first down on the 33 yard line. Just get down low if you're long shore. See how he bowls. Oh, There's yeah. the progress stop. Good spot by the officials. Right now might be the time, Ron, to take the shot yeah. if you're long shore for the end zone. And this 400 yards offense for this Cal. Oh, long shore looking for it. Steps up trying to get away. Picks up yardage inside the 25 down to the 23 yard line. Reese right on his tail. But he still was able to pick up good yardage. See, they wanted the shot downfield, but it was good coverage by the Minnesota secondary. Nate Longshore makes a nice decision not to throw the ball in the coverage. Pulls away from Willie Van de Steeg, number 91, being pursued by Mario Reese, number 48. Instead puts him in the second and short. Now we talked about managing the game, and that's exactly what he did there. Didn't try to force the pass. Lynch bounces to the outside. He's got some running room. Inside the 15, down to the 12. First hit was by Desi Stye, but it didn't do much. Lynch just kept on going. You know, you always used to hear about Barry Sanders. They said tackling him was like trying to catch smoke through a keyhole, right? But look at the strength of Lynch. He runs right through the initial contact yet again. Deion Hightower, number 44, had a shot at him in the backfield. Bangs off of him, gets outside. Cal's in business, first and 10 at the 13. And they can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Jordan wide to the left, Jackson wide to the right. On the ground, Lynch bowls his way down to the five yard line. Clock moves into six minutes left to play here in the third. Ron, that was a beautiful zone blocked play by the Cal offensive line. All right, watch how sync, how in sync the offensive line is. Everyone stepping right foot, manning up on someone. If there's a guy in your gap, put a hat on him. See the space they created? And then the strength of Marshawn Lynch to get a little something extra at the end. He has 95 yards rushing the football on 16 carries. Second and two from the five. Lynch bounces off. Looking for a block from Longshore. Gets it. Puts his head down. Touchdown.
That is E for effort. He goes over 100 yards on his 17th carry. A five-yard touchdown run for Marshawn Lynch. Partner, I know it's blasphemous to invoke the Green Bay Packers when a team from Minnesota is playing. But right now, can't you hear the spirit of Vince Lombardi? Grab, grab, grab. Doesn't anyone tackle anyone out here? Grab, grab, grab. That's what I was know. happening on that drive. That's his first rushing touchdown of the year. The extra point is good. Minnesota was moving on their first possession of the third. Came up with nothing. Cal takes advantage of getting the ball back, and they lead it now by 18. And it all was because of that man, Marshawn Lynch. Five-yard touchdown run, but 14 plays, 79 yards. A couple of penalties helped him, Charles. Penalties and missed tackles. Right there, number 91, Willie Van der Steeg. That was his opportunity. Deion Hightower missed, I believe, the play previously. Mm -hmm. 25 yards and penalties on that drive helped California. Some determined running and some nice offensive line. Have been a couple of bright spots for Minnesota. Their opening drive, the 99-yard kickoff return by Dominic Jones. This one will be well deep and out of the end zone. And the Minnesota offense will take over, trailing by 18, 35-17. Greg Sager, any word on our uh, official? Yeah, he is back. Jerry Meyerhoff has the ball in his hands right now, spotting it at the 20-yard line, had some treatment in the locker room, got his leg wrapped up, and is back out here. He said the only problem is he only has to mark the ball, he has to march off 15-yard penalties with a sore hamstring. He's got to make sure it's 15 and not 14. <laughs> <laughs> He'll pull up. Good defense again, this time coming up from that rover position, Brandon Hampton. Ron, how about a contrast? Remember, remember all the missed tackles we talked about for Minnesota on the last drive against Marshawn Lynch? This is how you tackle in space. Number three, yeah. Brandon Hampton. Excellent job driving the feet, taking him down. One-on-one, -on -one, excellent job. And that's what uh, Cal worked on this year. Bob Gregory challenged him to be a little more physical. And the tackle better. Cupido back. Has a man. Caught, complete, right down is Logan Payne. You know, we talk about Bob Gregory and the, and the defensive coordinator at, at Cal. When you play Minnesota style, it really reduces the schemes that you can play defensively. But now that the score is 18, doesn't Bob have more options uh, on defensive calls? He does, and that's Bob. He's the guy without the binoculars. Now things open up a little bit for him because third and long, Minnesota probably not likely to run the ball, right? That allows you to turn your blitzers loose. Minnesota known for protecting the quarterback. That's usually when their run game is working effectively. They haven't given up in a sack in eight straight games. Cooper back. Throws over the middle. Pass caught. First down. Minnesota up over the 35-yard line. Mike Chambers, the redshirt freshman from Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, just outside of Cleveland, his first collegiate catch. And while Mike Chambers gets the credit for a nice catch, Better give some extra credit to the offensive line there. Third and long, and look at the protection that Brian Cupido receives. No one really pressuring him, able to step and make the throw. Swing it to Daniels. Right at the line of scrimmage, Tyson Alualu. He is a true freshman out of Honolulu, Hawaii. He was the number two high school player in Hawaii. They think that this guy could be vicious. And you were waiting all game long. Alu -alu. To be able to say Tyson Alu Alu. I gotcha. <laughs> I worked on that today. So Ken Delgado, his coach, defensive line coach, said this guy is special. And he'll be a big surprise in the Pac-10 as a freshman. And we saw a flash of that. 6'2, 288 pounds. No gain on the play. Second and ten. Cupido keeps it. Takes a pop as he gets up to the 39-yard line. Brandon Hampton went low. Desmond Bishop went high. That's called a Cupido sandwich. Now they always talk about a quarterback needing to know how to protect himself. You mentioned it. One guy gets him low. See right there, he stood up. And that allows number 10, Desmond Bishop, to arrive in a bad, bad mood and really stroke him from the other side. Third down and six. Minnesota had a big play the last third and long. 
Cupido, three step drop, the look in again to Payne, caught another first down. Great job by the senior quarterback out of Cincinnati, Ohio. This goes back to something the head coach Glenn Mason told us when we talked to him Friday at Minnesota's practice. He said, you know, we can throw the ball better than we get credit for because we run the ball so well that if given a choice, we'll run it. But when we need to throw it, we can do it quite well. And that's two times in a row now that Cal didn't get off the field on third down. Again to pay. That may be a, a considered a run. It was close to a lateral. Well, I want to say that Cupido has already moved up to number five on all-time passing yardage, and he's just passed, also passed Tony Dungy for pass attempts to number seven. See, Tony Dungy always told people, he could, hey, I, I could play quarterback. Yes, he did. I know I played DB in the pros, but I was a quarterback in college. And Brian Cupido continuing a good tradition of Minnesota quarterbacks. Told you at the start of the game, he is playing better than he ever has, and how much he has improved the last couple of years. Daniels, running game not doing a whole lot, but he does get close to the first down, and he should have it. Bishop with eight tackles on the night. Well, let's talk about Brian Cupido. Well, Ron, you you mentioned earlier. Now he has a streak of 12 straight games with a touchdown pass. But his coach said that he came of age in a bowl game, the mm -hmm. City Bowl, a couple years ago against Alabama. Got hurt, couldn't do as much as, as normal with a bad shoulder. They limited the playbook, he gritted it out, and they got a big win over Alabama. And he really sold his team on his talents that game. First down and 10 from the 32, a little razzle dazzle with Jay Thomas. Tripped up as he crosses the 30 yard line. They'll mark it at the 27. Sid Quan Thompson goes underneath to trip him up. Well, fans, now it's time for our AFLAC trivia question. Who was the last national champion to lose its opening game and still win the national championship? I've got a couple of thoughts on that. I've got it narrowed down to two. Yes, we do. I know which one I want to go with, and we need to give our answer before the answer is revealed so people believe yeah. that we got it, right? I'll take one, you'll take the other. Okay. Flip a coin. Second down and seven. Cupido, quick look in. Penalty flag is thrown. It's picked off, but there is a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. The Minnesota coaches all threw up their hands in the air. They couldn't believe what they saw. First, let's see who the flag is against. Damian Hughes did pick off the pass. That's his second. There was no foul on the play. Disregard the play. First down, California. Yeah, another Glenn Mason's team coughs it up. They were starting to move the football again. Watch right, Damon Hughes, number three. He just stays uh, inside, and he's able to see the ahead, whole play from his vantage point. See, he saw right into Brian Cupido, who was staying with the one receiver one, the whole two, way. Three. It's kind of what we call clue coverage. See the receiver with one eye, the quarterback straight through, able to drive right on the football, never had to retreat, and picks off his second pass of the game. That's why he's a Jim Thorpe candidate this year. First and 10 from the 20 new two down for Cal. Marshawn Lynch. Great job on that right side of that Minnesota defense. Willie Van de Steeg coming up to make the stop. The sophomore out of Silver Lake, Minnesota. Hey, let's give him a little bit of credit. We see David Locke with the defense coordinator. We singled him out on a missed tackle previously. It led to a touchdown by Marshawn Lynch. That time, one-on-one, -on -one, when Lynch tried to bounce it, Van de was the first guy there to really tie him up. No gain on the play, second and 10. Inside of 25 seconds left in the third. Longshore wide open again as Lavelle Hawkins with some room to run. Has the first down, plus three. Gets up to the 35-yard line. Deion Hightower on the stop. Hawkins' his eighth catch of the night. And this is a great story, Charles, because he didn't like his role last year with the team. And he started to pout, went in to talk to Jeff Tedford, and he said, listen, coach laid it on the line for me. Yeah, he told him, hey, you can pout all you want, but that doesn't help you get better. You need to get better running your routes, dedication with the playbook, and doing something positive. And we're going to end the quarter here on that catch by LaBelle right, Hawkins. He's right taking that coaching to heart now. and has become a much Come better player. Coming. Three quarters are in the books. Cal leading Minnesota 35-17.
KFC's Build Your Own Variety Bucket. Choose in college football presented by Orvis. As we get set to start the fourth quarter, Cal leading Minnesota 35-17 along with Craig Sager and Charles Davis. I'm Ron Thulin. Glad to have you with us tonight as the fog starts to roll in here in Strawberry Canyon. First and 10 from the 35. Lynch goes in motion. Longshore swings it out to him. He gets a block on the outside. Gets the first down as he closes in on the 50. First and 10, do it again. Go. Let's check in with Mark Fine. How about the uh, Ohio State Texas game, Mark? Well, there's a lot going on, guys. Let's get you up to date. First, Colt McCoy. Unbelievable the poise this guy's had in this game. Finding Billy Pittman to tie the game at seven. But Troy Smith comes back, and remember, not the defensive backfield they want, and he finds Ted Ginn Jr. for the touchdown, 14-7. Yeah, still a lot of football left to be played in Austin. Penalty flag is thrown. Ted Ginn Jr. getting deep. They knew they wanted to do that. 53 on the offense. Five-yard penalty still first down. You know, we, you know, we just saw the Ohio State, but believe it or not, there are a lot of players on the Minnesota squad from right around that area. How about one, two, three, four from Columbus and one from Cincinnati, Joe? Not a real surprise. The state of Ohio is yeah. a recruiting hotbed for anyone in the top 25. You always hear about Florida, you hear about Texas, you hear about California. Mm -hmm. Ohio is one of those states that mines a lot of talent. On first and 15 from the shotgun, four set. Nothing doing. He's going to be tripped up for a loss. Willie Van de Steek, the second tackle of the ball game. That'll push him back a couple of more yards. Also has a fumble recovery in uh, tonight's game. Timing seemed off right from the get-go on that play. Mm -hmm. A little stumbly and then a nice play by Willie Van de Steek. They bring Sam DeSaw to the near side. On second and 16, low snap. Longshore just does a nice job getting rid of it. Mike Sherrills came up to put the pressure on him. Let's Here take a look at our Aflac right trivia right question right again. Thank you. And our question was, who was the last national champion to lose its opening game and still win the national championship? I we think thought, it's Miami. Uh, See, I, think I thought Miami. it was Colorado. I think Miami 83, and they lost to Florida in the season opener. Ooh, and I believe, it, I believe it was the last time they wore all orange in their uniform. That's good. <laughs> there you go. It's opening night at the Orange Bowl. They lost to Florida. Then they rolled through with Bernie Kosar and crew and beat Nebraska That's back right. in the Orange Bowl. Third down and 16. They'll just put it on the ground. Four set. Doesn't get back to the original line of scrimmage. Neil Allen. With a little help from Steve Davis on the stop. Good defensive effort by Minnesota, and yeah, will have to kick it away. Yeah, terrific defensive stand. And if you're Minnesota now, you just want the football, right? You're not rushing the punter. You're playing what they call punt safe. David Lockwood, the defense coordinator, has to be excited about what he saw from his guys. Could have had a letdown at this stage of the game. Nothing doing. Dominic Jones back on his own 10-yard line. Andrew Larson set to kick it away. Only his third punt. And this is a driving one. Jones back at the five. And he is hog tied at about the nine. 47 yards on the kick, eight on the return. 13 30 left to play in the ball game. Cal on top of Minnesota by 18. Five seventeen is their score. Number twenty-three, California, tried to even up their record at one and one. Tim Mixon was expected to be one of the stars of this defense. Blew out the knee out for the year, but you look at Damian Hughes. It looks like he's playing for Tim Mixon in, in a big way. Two interceptions already tonight. A preseason All-America selection, living up to his billing. Cupido being pressured. Throws it right at the feet of Daniels. He is rolled over in the end zone. 
More on Mixon. Here's Craig Sager. Six. Well, Mixon very active, talking to his teammates. Very upset last week. He was on the sidelines of Tennessee. He said this week they're playing much better. He said the most important thing he sees out there is the tackling. He does have a torn ACL. He'll be operated on Thursday. The good news is that he's a corporate management major and he is on pace to graduate. So he should be in grad school next year and get another year of eligibility and return to this defense. Uh, he's a good one. Cupido seeing pressure again, throws it into a crowd, caught. Up over the 25 to the 27, Matt Spath on the reception, his third of the night. Hey, Sags, quick question for you. With Mixon doing so well academically, you mentioned he have a chance to come back defense, next year. Is that an appeal defense, for a sixth year for him, defense, or will that just be a fifth year? Defense, that would be the sixth year. That's why he has to graduate before they'd be granted the sixth year. He will not know it until October, but as long as he's on pace to graduate and will have his degree, chances are he will get that sixth year. Thanks. Daniels. Up over the 30 to the 35, stumbles his way to the 38. That's good enough for a first down. I think if you're Bob Gregory, the D coordinator for Cal, one thing he's not going to like when he watches the tape is the number of times in long yardage pit situations Minnesota has picked up the first down. Mm -hmm. Comes Daniels right at you. Zach Follett not able to get run. into the gap. Breezes best. Bernard Hicks, number two, before cutting it back for a first down. Cupido. Deep into the flat, almost tipped. Looks like Sid Quan Thompson. He went underneath again, Charles. May have gotten a piece of that ball. It was intended for Eric Decker. I really think if the ball had been thrown well, he would have picked it off. I think you're right. Because he was in great position, just as the coaches told us about Tennessee. Actually, was in good position at Tennessee. Just didn't make the tackle. He was right on the play both times when the ball, when the receiver caught it and then took it upfield and scored. He tackles him. It's a nice game, but it's not a touchdown. Let's go, y'all. Let's go. Pain in motion. Daniels hops over the 40, over the 45, bangs his way almost up to the 50 yard line. He'll be about a half a yard short of the first down. Damian Hughes on the stop, but he took quite a hit. From the 255, 260 pound Alex Daniels. And the offensive line for Minnesota does a nice job. Watch the block at the point of attack by number 64, Steve Daniel, Scheidel. Daniel. That allowed for us, that allowed space for Daniels to get into the secondary before he's hauled down by the DBs. Third down and one. They're three of eight tonight in this position. Daniels. I don't know if he got it, Charles. I don't think he got it. There's going to be a fourth down decision for Glenn Mason. Desmond Bishop on the stop. He has nine tackles tonight. They're going to have to measure. Nope, they're not. They're saying it is fourth hey, down. Yeah, and he's going for it right now. Not even hesitating. Already sent in his package. I think you have to, don't you? Yeah, I think so. And this is where you're, you're either appealing to your offensive line or you're pulling something big. I think we're going to see Daniels try, try this one right here. Trying to come at the Cal defense. Two tight ends with Simmons and Spade from the eye. Penalty flag, my goodness. Right to snap, false start. On the offense, number 80, five yard penalty, still fourth down. Ninth penalty tonight for the Gophers. So number 80 would be the second tight end, Jack Simmons. Now you're probably punting the ball away. Here we go. Until you wait from a chance to get a first down and keep the ball, you got to send the punt team out here. 100 yards and penalties for Glenn Mason. And they will have to kick it away. I can just tell you right now, Ron, in film, when they watch this film and they review this play, there'll be one word that comes out of the coach's mouth. Unacceptable what happened right there. 2-6 punt, high wobbly kick. Fair catch is called at the 22-yard line. So instead of fourth down and less than a yard, you have to kick it away and give it to your opponent who already leads by 18. 11-12 to play in the ballgame. Tradition of courage. A tra On the country like New England lobster and shrimp only at Red Lobster. 
by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horn. Dodge by Singular, raising the bar. And by Dish Network, get 100% all digital TV starting at only $19.99 a month. Dish Network, better TV for all. First and 10 from Fort Cal, their own 22-yard line. Closing in on 11 minutes left to play in the ball game. Marshawn Lynch in the backfield, already 114 yards running, and he adds to that. Give him 12 more. 126 unofficially for Marshawn Lynch. These are the payoff runs, Ron, from the first three quarters of the game as we see Andrew Cameron limping off the field. Not a sight you want to see. Three surgeries in 10 months had him thinking, I don't want to play football anymore, was going to give the mm -hmm. game up. Decided to come back and give it one more try. And Mike Tepper is his backup. Lynch showing some patience. Penalty flag is thrown, and he is going the wrong direction. Deion Hightower had the first hit, was hanging on for dear life, and Steve Davis gave him some help. Great but job of pursuit. That always gives coaches a glimmer of hope because we were talking during the commercial break. Minnesota has really hurt themselves tonight with penalties. They seem like they get some offense going, and then a penalty here, a penalty there, and it's not so much the penalties, it's when they happen. Right. Totally. On the offense, number 51. Penalties declined, second down at the end of the run. Right in the middle, they come against Alex Mack, the offensive center. See him right there, 51, holding on to Garrett Brown, 99. Deion Hightower, the go, initial man. contact. Here Steve Davis, and the Here rest of the Golden go, Gopher defense Here getting to Marshawn Lynch. That never say die attitude. Yep. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it leads to loss of yardage for the Cal Golden Bears. Well, he lost 14 on that, brings up a second down and 23. Well, he'll want the ball back again. He just heard his yards oh, yeah. per carry, didn't he? Yes, he did. And they keep it on the ground over the 25 yard line to the 28 yard line. Just in for set on the carry. For set at 68 yards prior to that rush. So I think Jeff Tedford's looking at the clock a little bit here. I think that call there was a manage the clock call. Second and long yardage in normal Good situations. Point. Cal wants to throw the football. Mm -hmm. Here he just wants the clock moving with his lead. 19 for a first down. Longshore steps up in the pocket, throws, has a man. First down at the 50 yard line. Deshaun Jackson again. These receivers are so powerful. He has six tonight. Hawkins has eight. And watch the adjustment Deshaun Jackson makes. Little post corner route, and then he makes the adjustment to come back and secure the catch. Because in a normal situation, that ball's out in front of him. He catches and steps mm -hmm. over the sideline. Here he sees this a little short, adjusts, secures the catch. Big first down for the Golden Bears. Jackson and Hawkins over 200 yards between them, each over the century mark. Longshore again, complete up to the 45 yard line, driven back. Good tackle by Deion Hightower. Lavelle Hawkins had the reception. Our first and 10 line is brought to you by Napa. And that first and 10 line, you can see just a shade inside the 40 or outside the 40. They need four for the first down, but it's only second down. You see that look? Nobody's telling Lavelle right. Hawkins. I'm tired of seeing you guys catch the ball and dance backwards. Catch the ball and get up into the gap and get, get forward for me. Corset. This time he doesn't dance too much. Maybe picks up a yard on the play. Even last year, which some thought was a disappointment for Cal Charles. One thing when we talked to Coach Tedford a couple of times last year and also this summer, he doesn't care about outside expectations. His motto for his team is get better every day, every game. Now a lot of coaches say that, but he does not let anything the, the what Pat Riley used to call peripheral opponents bother him. Yeah, every snap, let the last one go and move forward. We hear that a lot more in games like basketball. You know, you make a mistake, next play comes up right away. On third and three, Jackson again inside the 35 to the 33 yard line. He has seven tackles, or seven uh, catches tonight, along with three touchdowns. And Keith Massey made the tackle. So this is a nice catch by Jackson. 
Let's see if Massey could have done anything more to help. You know what he could have done? You got to go higher and try and pull the arms apart. Because he got there in time for the contact. If he goes through and tries to pull the arms apart, he has mm -hmm. a chance of breaking that play up. Instead, he let Jackson secure the catch, and then he made the tackle. Long short, 300 yards throwing the football tonight. Marshawn Lynch got another first down or close to it. High tower on the stop. Everybody said after last week's game against Tennessee, let's hope Lynch gets up, gets up slowly, he's okay. That his Heisman chances were gone. I disagreed with that. Totally, totally disagree. Along the way, getting rid of Heisman, someone will have a, what they would call a subpar or not up to their standards game. Brady Quinn, they were on all, all mm -hmm. last week because he didn't throw a touchdown pass. He threw three today. Troy Smith playing well right now. Lynch, we're seeing him tonight. We saw Peterson. Had a nice night against UAB and another nice day today. Plenty of guys who can get in that discussion as we go along. The bus, Byron Storer on the carry. Gets the first down. 7-13 to play in the ball game. Time definitely on Cal's side. See, and they're not just buses, Ron, that the Storer family. That's right. Has. They're coach wings. Oh, that, now that's huge. Okay, so let's, I don't want the Storer family upset <laughs> saying, hey, we're just operating like yellow buses that took you and me to school. No, no. no. We're talking about coach ways, the Cal Bears riding in style. Classic buses. First and 10 from the 19. Marshawn Lynch inside the 15 down of the 14. Craig Sager, what do you have for us? Well, the last thing you want to see is Andrew Cameron being carted off. All the injuries that Charles said he's gone through, both shoulders being operated on last year, the ACL. So it's not a pretty sight, but he is smiling because he says it's not major. He says he just twisted his ankle. So anybody that sees him off on the cart, his family at home, or people in the stands are going to say, oh, no, not again. But he told me it's not all that bad. He's just got an ankle tweaked, and he's going to be going to the locker room. That's great. He's a guy who dropped 30 pounds trying to come back to play this year, trying to get some pressure off of the knee and his shoulders. Good to see him back out there. I'm glad he's okay. On second and six. This time Lynch is stacked up. He's going to lose about a yard on the play. You know, I want to talk about Nate uh, Longshore here just for a second because after last week's game, everybody thought there might be a quarterback controversy. Joe A.U. last year was the starter, didn't fare well, he even got booed here at Cal. But even this week, the one thing Jeff Tedford said, listen, Nate deserves a second shot. It wasn't his fault at Tennessee. I think what he's doing is solidifying this position tonight. Yeah, he wants one guy in charge. He's never been big on rotating quarterbacks. Neither is Mike Dunbar, the offensive coordinator. They wanted Nate Longshore to have a chance to take charge of this position, and that he's doing this evening. Lynch. Spins gets close to the 10 yard line be about a yard short of the first down. Dominic Barber and John Shevlin on the stops. Let's take a look at our New York life stat of the night. How about that 300 yard passing for Nate Longshore four touchdown passes. New York life has been protecting families for over 160 years. Now that's a winning stat. What a difference one week makes, huh? And fourth and short, Cal deciding possession and moving the clock. More important than points at this stage. They're going to go for it. Lynch and score in the backfield. Lynch, first down inside the five. Was there any doubt? Was there any doubt? I don't think so. You know what this drive is, Ron? This is a drive that coaches may not tell the players this, but this is a drive that they're going to have big grins on their faces when they review it in the films. You know why? Didn't this drive start with over 10 minutes to go? Yes, it did. Nearly 11 minutes to go in the quarter. We're starting with 11-12 left in the quarter. We're at 425 and counting. They've eaten up clock, kept the ball away from Minnesota, and they're enjoying this one. Forsett takes a hit as he crosses the five yard line. Mario Reese, his sixth stop of the night. This goes back to what Jeff Tedford, as we see Cameron uh, being taken off the field, what Tedford said he was going to give his speech before tonight's game. Just about the guys in the locker room are the people that count. That's what's important. Let's get out there and let's get our chemistry going and everything else. 
will fall into place. Thank goodness Craig Sager tells Andrew Cameron was really okay as they cart him off. That's time that, you know, that picture there may not be indicative of his actual good health. So that's a good thing. He says it's not serious. Four set. Close to the goal line, stacked up, still pushing, but they'll mark it at the one. First hit was by Neil Allen. Touchdown Bears on three. Touchdown Bears on three. They'd love a touchdown here, but what they're enjoying is the fact that the O-line is getting the push up front and the running backs running with abandon, not giving up on the play, still moving the pile, and the clock continues to wind down in this ball game. We're going to be in the three-minute mark, and they snap this one. About an eight-minute drive. Third and goal from the one. Touchdown, Cal! His second touchdown run of the night. Again, makes someone miss in the backfield at the initial point of attack. And once that person missed, then he was able to use a little force to bang into the end zone. And the extra point is good. Marshawn Lynch, 26 carries, 138, 139 yards, two touchdowns. Cal leads 42-17. Hi, Kevin Nealon here. Ever wonder where to find the funny? Third straight year. They have their sights set on a Pac-10 title. And just remember, though, Cal lost its opening game each year. They won a conference title back in 58 and 75. Yeah, in 58. They lost to the University of the Pacific mm -hmm. and in 75 to Colorado. The 58 team, wasn't that Joe Capp's squad? Joe Capp's team. Also in the longest yard, in a memorable role as the walking boss. There you go. That's right. Jeff Tedford is, uh, <laughs> I'm sure he's pleased, but uh, he just wanted his team just to have a victory tonight and to just improve from last week. And I think he's accomplished that. A lot of tweaking still to go on in this football team, though. Sure, but overall satisfying tonight because they were as physical, if not more physical, than Minnesota this evening, mm -hmm. which is exactly what they wanted. Minnesota, an excellent test. You wanted to figure out if your team's going to go helmet to helmet with people. Short kick, Jones. And he is going to be stopped at the 24 yard line. At the beginning of the game, we gave you our keys to the game for Glenn Mason and the Gophers of Minnesota. Here's how they stacked up. Well, normally an excellent running football team. Week before, 322 yards, well down below that. Create space. Find Matt Spate. After the first big catch, two very short ones. 11 guys getting the number 10. He gave up the field on third down. Cal, 8 of 13 on third down for conversions. Not good. Lupino has some time, throws across his body, passes complete to Chambers. Up over the 40 to the 43-yard line. Let's take a look at the keys for Cal tonight and how they've done. The Minnesotas didn't pay off the way they wanted. Rhythm got better as things went along. A little shaky in the beginning. Marshawn Lynch, ball's not that heavy. 14 or 15 ounces, he had 27 touches. So overall, they did pretty well. Lupino over the middle, complete. Tight end, Matt Spaeth, his fourth reception of the night. Here's a guy that was a defensive star in high school. They didn't think he could play defensive end. They said, I got an idea. Let's put him at tight end. Yeah, they thought they'd made a mistake. You know, he wasn't playing well at D end or linebacker. So the first day he played tight end, they figured out they had a gem. And now Minnesota moving the football again, complete to Chambers again. Chambers with three catches tonight, his first three of his collegiate career, and they hustle to the line of scrimmage with 2-0-1 to play. This team is still scratching. Here comes the blitz. Cupido is going to be sacked for the first time in eight games. Brandon Meebane coming in and a bunch of others. Only gave up three sacks all of last year. A big part of that is the run game. Keeps people at bay. But now that they have to throw the ball, a lot tougher to pass block. 
almost picked off as the ball was being juggled by Daniels. Let's check in with Mark Fine. Mark. All right, well, guys, it's getting a little frantic here as we prepare for your Dodge postgame report. We're going to take a look at 1v2 Ohio State, Texas. Of course, also Air Force with a chance for a win over Tennessee. Came down to an interesting coaching decision and a great finish. And not one, but two games with not one, but two overtimes. It's all coming up on your Dodge postgame report, guys. Is he, te is he teasing He's me about teasing Tennessee? you about Tennessee. Don't tease me about Tennessee, Mark Fine. 132 <laughs> to play in a ball game. Spaeth again on the reception. <laughs> That'll be his fifth catch. Yeah, don't be hanging us out like that. Hey, does he think he's funny? <laughs> I think Ernie's in his ear. Ernie Johnson's in his ear told him to do that. I do realize this is TBS very funny, but uh, yeah. got our limits here. Fourth down and one, they go for it, and they get the first down with 109 to play. This is what you like to call coaching points, Charles, because yeah. here you're thinking, okay, we got a good win. The team comes and just slams it down your throat. Now Tedford's got something to yell at him about tomorrow. Yeah, and actually that won't bother him very much because it gives him something to bring him back down the earth. And while Minnesota is trying to salvage something for pride, and their coaches will be judging their kids on, hey, I know the game was over, mm -hmm. but did you give me something down the stretch? That's right. And it also gives you something, a good taste in your mouth, too. That's Spate's sixth catch. Timeout's going to be called by Minnesota. Cupido has had a pretty decent game tonight. 21 to 31, 243 yards. And our Vegas.com player of the game is Marshawn Lynch, 139 yards, a couple of touchdowns, Charles. Yeah, you know, they said they wanted him to touch the ball more than he did in Knoxville. That was mission accomplished because they always feel if he ends up with 24, 20 or more carries, he's going to give you the big time production. And that he's done this evening in tandem with his partner, Justin Forsett, who also had a nice evening running the ball. And he's back in the Heisman picture. I don't think he ever left. No, he never really left it. The key is Cal's season. That's you know, right. You, if, they, if they roll out and win and continue to win as they expect to do, he will stay in that discussion for a long time. Ernie Wheel right goes wide to the left along with Logan Payne. 61 seconds to play in the ballgame. Cal shows blitz. They bring four. Cupido steps up. Going to be dropped for the second time in this drive. Mickey Pimentel on the sack. First two sacks of the year allowed by this Minnesota offensive line. Was that the first time with multiple sacks given up in 18 games? That's right. Only 46 in the last five years. Craig Sager still on the sideline. Well, we were talking earlier about the great academics here at the University of California, but one guy we need to give special notice to is Desmond Bishop. What a defensive leader he is for this team. He has 20 family members here. His family, his mother, Sherry Harris, is related to the Russworm family, going all the way back to John Brown Russworm, the first African American ever to graduate from American University. He was born to a slave mother and a white merchant father. John Brown Russworm also started the first black newspaper in the United States. And a prestigious award is given out at U. Penn to an outstanding student in the name of John Brown Russworm. One of the recipients, our own Maceo Grant, our AD, who is in the draw. Very good. Congratulations to Maceo All and right. also to Desmond Bishop. See, we always knew Maceo was a smart guy. Yeah. He's a pen guy. He's a pen. Hey, if you're a pen, you got to be smart. Cupido running for his life just throws it to no one in particular. Is, is there anyone better at research than our man says? <laughs> Unbelievable. My goodness. <laughs> 49 seconds left in yeah. the ball game, and Glenn Mason's team has had a couple of great drives tonight, but they've shot themselves in the foot with penalties, which has stalled things up. But you can't blame that young man. He's done his part. Uh, he's hung in there as best he could. One of those interceptions, I think, was a busted route by a receiver. It made it difficult. This could be it. Fourth down and nine for the Gophers. Cupido throws out on the flat pass. Is it incomplete? Yes, it's incomplete. 
Payne thought he had it, juggled it, tried to bring it up from the left side to the right side and just dropped it. Cal takes over and they'll put the final 44 seconds away. This is a reminder, college football on TBS continues next Saturday, 7 o'clock Eastern. We'll be in Boulder, Colorado as the Colorado Buffaloes host Arizona State quarterback Rudy Carpenter. All begins at 7 o'clock Eastern time in Colorado State, beating Colorado tonight 13 to 10. So Colorado with new coach uh, Hawkins, they start out 0-2. Dirk Cutter's going to come in and smell a little blood up there. He's going to need to, Dirk Cutter. And Dan Hawkins, old coaching buddies yeah. at Boise State. Dan replaced Dirk as the head coach there when Dirk took the Arizona State job. Absolutely incredible. Give yourselves a big round of Well, Joe Ayub is coming to the ball game at quarterback, but they're just going to let the clock run down. 533 yards total offense for Cal. 352 for Minnesota. Good luck here, but the only number that means anything, the number on the scoreboard, 42-17. Cal wins it. They're one and one on the year, as is Minnesota. Josh. Final thoughts. Well, Minnesota has a chance to get right next week at home against Temple before they start Big Ten play. They'll need that one. Cal has to feel so much better after what happened in Knoxville. Their goals are still out there to win the Pac-10 and still play in a BCS bowl game. Nate Longshore, 300 yards passing the football on 22 of 31. No interceptions. Four touchdowns, but you look at that talented receiving core of Cal. Hawkins, Jackson, both over the century mark. Hawkins with nine catches, Jackson with nine, and Nate Longshore threw him the balls with our Craig Sager now. Well, Nate, first of all, congratulations on a great performance and also being able to finish a game. I know it's been a long two years for you. Talk about your performance tonight. Um, as an offense and as a team, we just really wanted to come out and uh, execute tonight and uh, kind of work for ourselves and anything else just to uh, let ourselves know that we, we, we have what it takes. I mean, it's been a... Uh, it's been a long off season and it was a rough first week. So we, as a team, we just need to get out here and uh, prove it to ourselves that, you know, we could do it. You told me earlier in the week that running this spread offense is one thing, but you don't like to carry the ball, but it's not your job. But yet today, several opportunities, you made the most of it. Talk about how much more comfortable you are in the way this offense is moving. Um, I, th I think as an offense, we did real well today. And, uh, you know, sometimes I have to run and I hate doing it, but I mean, you just got to do what you got to do. But uh, I'd rather just give it to Marshawn and uh, Justin because they did an outstanding job tonight. We talked about also the hangover from last week, how you guys are putting it behind you. You still have a lot of goals to go through. What was this week really like for you? Um, we were more focused in practice. I felt like uh, the intensity was up and the focus was, uh, was there. So we just knew we had to come out this week and, you know, do it right. You said you'd rather hand the ball off to Marshawn Lynch. That's what we'll do right here. Marshawn, congratulations. Coming out here, putting 42 points on the board after last week. Tell us a little bit how good it feels compared to a week ago. Uh, well, you know, it, it always feels to come out and get a win, man. We just had to, you know, get back to the drawing board and start fresh. Uh, that's what we did, you know. We put that game behind us, you know. Now this game is over. We put this game behind us. We get ready for next week. You never give up, even when it looks like you're about to be tackled. A couple of times you get to go backwards here today. Talk a little bit about your drive and how you just never want to go down. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I just developed that as, you know, a, a, a young kid, you know, to never stop, never quit. You know, my mom uh, always told me never quit at nothing I do, so I took it to heart. Yes, you did. Two touchdowns over 100 yards. Congratulations. Great performance. 42-17 in the final. Back to you, Ryan. All right, thank you very much, Craig Sager. Good job by Cal tonight. You've been watching TBS Saturday Night College Football presented by Orbitz. Be sure to tune in next Saturday, 7 o'clock Eastern, Arizona State Sun Devils travel to Boulder to take on the Buffaloes of Colorado. For Charles Davis, Craig Sager, and our entire crew, I'm Ron Thulin saying good night from Berkeley, California. The final score again, Cal wins it 42-17. Now it's time for the Dodge postgame show with Mark Fine. All right, thanks very much, Ron. Quite a night. Big win for Cal. You know, Charles was talking about the fact 